Good evening, everyone. I'm just going to call this meeting to order because it is after 7 o'clock. I want us to try to keep up with our schedule. Good evening. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, if you haven't already, please sign in. Um, there's a public attendance checklist where that gentleman's standing. So if you get a chance, please sign in so we know you are here. Um, appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> so, Chuck, can I ask you to announce which which hearings, what's the order of the hearings? Uh, so the first, the first two hearings are uh, 15 of Main Street, and then uh, after that, uh, scheduled for 715, but it may be after that time. Uh, 125, 126, Azalea Circle uh, has continued. And they won't be here until our first meeting in February, which is the 13th. So anyone here for Azalea Circle, that has been continued. Um, and then right after that, we're going to go into Lakeview and Eaton. But uh, we are going to continue that also to 845 tonight. So we won't be talking about Lakeview or Eaton until 845. We'll continue that at 720. And then we'll continue on with our agenda with 725, 44 Roma Lane, and 730, uh, 135, 149, Iowa Street. So that's our, that's our agenda. OK. Did everybody get that? All right. OK. Um, do we need we need to reopen? So Chuck, we're gonna, okay, we're going to reopen the public hearing for notice of intent 270 1503 Main Street, Lot A, Map 60, Lot 11, Castellano, and we're also going to re we're also going to reopen notice of intent 270-0704. 1503 Main Street, Lot B, Map 60. These are reopened and be conducted under the authority of the Massachusetts Weapons Protection Act. Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended under Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. The hearing will be conducted as follows. The applicant will present their proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator, technical advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address questions and comments to the chair, or to actually to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which you, sh which you should please direct to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. Um, as I mentioned, there's an attendance sheet so when at the door, so if you get a chance, please sign it. Um, thank you for coming out tonight. And at this time, would the members of the Conservation Commission please introduce themselves, starting with Mr. Chair. Uh, Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Michael Flynn. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Carl Ciccone. David Pett. Thank you. Would you like to? Sure. Good evening. My name is Maureen Harold from Norris Environmental Services. Um, the plan I handed out was in Lot A, since that's the first one on the agenda. Lot A is the lot in the rear of the property. Um, I was in front of you last year and discussed and introduced the project to the commission. And at the end of that hearing, the commission requested that the town engineer review the drainage on the property. So since then, uh, Thad Berry, the engineer, and the town engineer have um, been sending back and forth responses, um, reviewing the drainage. Long story short, the town engineer is on board for the drainage that is designed. He has approved everything. Um, the last outstanding item is an operation and maintenance plan. Um, because this is just two individual lots, the thought is we want the future homeowners to be aware that this is a drainage system. You have a swale on your property, you can't fill it in. Um, so I have a draft operation and maintenance plan um, that Mr. Berry 
produce late this afternoon. Um, obviously, we'd want the town engineer to take a look at it before it's a final, but that's the idea behind the operation and maintenance plan. Uh, essentially, the homeowners will um, inspect the drainage wheels, uh, remove any leaf or litter or debris around the catch basins, uh, make sure the drainage wheels are uh, grassed in their mode, uh, remove any trash or debris twice a year. Has, has the town engineer seen this? No, okay. he has okay. not seen this, but I just wanted to kind of give you a draft to let the commission know that um, we are working on it and um, we will finalize it at some point and get everybody on board with it. Okay. Did you have any additional questions? One more thing, if I can add. Uh, sorry, Jeff. The Board of Health has approved the septic designs as well. So okay. that's been approved and finalized and done. The uh, plan indicates the buffer zone impacts on lot A, the 25 to 35. It's got the 2,100 square feet. When, it's, when it says impact, what, what exactly do you mean there? I'm trying to find like on the plan what exactly we're talking about. So the limit of work is actually the erosion controls. Yep. So they're going to be colored in orange on the plan. So um, between the 25 and the 35, um, we're proposing plantings in that area primarily. Yeah. Um, not so much grading, but more or less plantings you know, we'd have to move some of the trees back here for the um, installation of the patio area and so on and so forth. But that's that's what we're talking about is the plantings along that Correct. zone there. And that's the area that we're talking is that strip that you, you just lump that whole thing in, in that. Right. So there. no structures are proposed. It's just essentially plantings to meet the tree policy. Okay. Okay, so what what were the substantial plan changes from the last plan we got? So essentially there was some back and forth with the um, town engineer uh, regarding the drainage. Um, and what did that impact on the plan? Just the notes or? Essentially just notes. He wanted some inspection ports along the infiltration. So those inspection ports are shown. They're also on the detail page if you want to see the full set of plans. I have a copy here for you. Um, just real minor stuff. I have a review here. I just wanted to get a sense of but the, what it was about. This was approved by the town engineer, correct? Yes, it was. Chuck, you should get a letter from them saying you reviewed it. Yeah, we will get a memo from them. I'm working closely with Alex Wasicki, uh, and uh, it's different than it than it was before. We really are going over these things together. So. More is coming up, and we're talking to the applicants. Um, either he'll call or I'll call, and we'll say we're, we're look, what we're looking for. And substantially agrees with what's out here, except that there was no operation and maintenance plan. So that's that's where we are right now. And since he has, we're gonna put some dates in it. It doesn't have dates. And uh, is this assigned to one? It, have you figured out which homeowner is taking care of the stormwater? Essentially, I think it was going to be lot B, but we can certainly have it on both lots just as a safe measure. Well, so it's A and B. It's yeah. got, some, got to be somebody's responsibility. Yeah. Right. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, you know. Uh, and it's shown on both lots because he has the property line here. Yep. So some of it is on um, lot A. And it does say that both A and B are responsible, so that might be something that needs to be ironed out. Who's going to get their responsibility to take care of this? Um, another thing that the engineer had, the original design for the drainage infiltrated for a half inch uh, storm, and the engineer wanted to increase that to an inch storm. So that affected the drainage a little bit. It made it a little bit larger. Um, 
at this point we actually can't close without this uh, uh, operation maintenance plan going before the town engineer, correct? Chuck? Sorry. We can't close this without the O and M going uh, and being by the town engineer. No, we have uh, three options. So uh, we can issue and ask them. So it's about three weeks till our next meeting. So we could close tonight and issue at the next meeting, and they just have to have a finalized document in front of us and something we could review before that meeting or before the building permits issue. Same thing, we would review that. Or the last thing would be at the certificate of compliance. You could um, put it off until that time. Okay. So it's up to the commission how comfortable they feel with the project. I mean, we've done we've done it before where you start preparing the order of conditions and you've got something ready for the next meeting, assuming that everything's going to go well. And you know, we just continue yeah. knowing that there's not really any changes to right. occur. But. I don't have a problem with you know closing and then issuing. I think you're you're ready to start preparing it. I don't, I don't see any right. thing that's going to change unless unless we catch that. Do you think you could have a finalized document before our next distribution date, which is a week before the meeting? Absolutely, you're meeting in two three weeks? weeks. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm hoping to get something to the town engineer this week if not this week on monday so okay. it's just i i think it's just a matter of cleaning up the details and if you want some of the verbiage change so. okay um yeah that's, that's, that sounds fine i, I did have some, an additional question i was going to ask about the um uh septic systems and my understanding was there was some work done out there was that just test pits before and the septic systems aren't installed or, or just the test pits just the test pits the deeps and the parks and system when in the construction schedule did the test uh did the septic systems go in when did they go in um during the foundation after the foundation after the is poured and once they get like the plumbing Yep. somewhat in they'll stop putting in the system start going in there okay okay it's it's outside of there, right it is a, just it's just the grading on both of them it's just it's just some grading and probably the machinery i was just wondering about some compacting and when when one thing was happening this uh this one for lot a seemed to be not in the way of anything, but it seemed like the house would be. B is going to be a pain. I mean, just yeah. in, the, in the future, it's going to be. The house is in the way. They have to go around the side. Um, you know, I guess no, no one's going to be going around over on the north side of the house, uh, the proposed house. I hope not. So, one of these plans does show erosion control, or does this one, the one with erosion control on it? Yes, the it's orange the line. line. Okay. I think I would want to add some additional uh, erosion control to prevent people from going on around lot B on the north side, so the where that turning area is around here. So coming, everything has to access back through this way. Should should we just make it a condition that construction access is through the south side of the foundation? Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's what we added. That the access is on the south side of the foundation. Okay. Carl, do you yeah. have a question? On lot A, just in reference to the below grade propane propane tank, I just don't see like a dashed liner that's outside of the 25 foot zone, right? Can I take a look at it? To yeah. See so below the grade propane tank it just points to an area off the driveway that is to put. That's an error because oh, the main tank is here. here. Yeah. So it's, okay. it's just a drafting error. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Any more questions? I make a motion to continue. We're going to make a motion to close. Okay. I'll make a motion to close. That's what we can do. Second. All right. Um, do we need four? Sorry, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so I'm going right. to ask if anybody from the public has any questions about. Can we do it? Can you um, do each one individually? Sorry. Fifteen oh. We haven't talked about it yet, right? So. All right. All right. Well, it's been a month. So we
1503 Main Street. Anybody here have questions about that? No, carrying none. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do, we have, do we have to close those individually, Chuck? Yeah. Okay. So I make a motion to close 1503 Main Street lot. Okay. This is A, lot A. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Another motion? Are you going to talk about B? Is there anything else? It's essentially, yeah, lot B was similar. It was just making sure that um, the town engineer was satisfied with the drainage and the sizing of the system. It's all the same drainage system we saw on lot. I mean, it, it goes over both properties. Yeah, correct. So they, it's were, the same they were both yeah. open That's when we started. And it's okay. the same O&M. Right. So I make a motion to close 1503 Main Street, lot B. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Okay, so like this. move on to Azalea. Yeah. Just, just before Maureen goes, do you have a date for her? That you need to have that. Uh, O&M back from the, to the engineer and then back from the engineer. Yeah, so we agreed that you're going to have that to me before the next distribution, so that's two weeks. So sure, sick. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so the next, the next hearing is for notice 710-270-0709, 125 and 126 Azalea Circle, map 23, lot 125 and 126, K Street Realty. Um, that public hearing is now reopened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. We're going to conduct this hearing in the same way. The applicant will present their proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator, advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your questions are presented. Um, and at this point, Chuck? So I just had a uh, point of clarification. Um, we're continuing this, so we should oh, we're continuing. we shouldn't okay. open it. But there is, uh, since we're here on uh, Azalea Circle, there was, uh, I did get a letter from a gentleman that um, was talking about flooding. And it was kind of related, but it, because it's geographically related, but um, he wanted us to look at Azalea Circle and the development that's going there because he thought that that development would contribute to additional flooding. So I sent the letter out in the package yep. and I and we have some uh, we have some images from this gentleman whose name was um Vito Vito Palatano. Is that right? Yep. Mm, okay. Yep. And let's see, let's look at the first one. So what he's saying is the water's rising up and the, when the water comes over the roots of the trees that they, um, they actually die from a lack of oxygen. So they can handle that for uh, a small amount of time, six weeks, a couple of months, but any longer they die and you have a dead standing tree out in the middle of these areas. So Chuck, do you know where those pictures are taken? Were they behind his house? Uh, yes. So this is, uh, again, the Azalea Circle uh, application. It would be directly behind this property in that low wetland area. Okay. And it would extend to the bridge and all the way back to the stream channel that comes down from Salem Street. Okay. So is this a, a one-off? Is this a consistent change? Is it a changeover? You know, a 
certain number of years, it's difficult to discern what this is from a picture without knowing the history of what it was and any, any definitive measurements that have been taken in the past in that area. And you're talking about water, water level water rising. Level, any flooding, any changes over time, what causes that change? Um, so this, this is the, a difficult area because it, it has an open channel coming down from uh, Salem Street, and I'm not sure that it's hydraulically connected, this area here, but I think there's a berm between that open channel and this kind of swampy, wooded swamp here. And then when it goes underneath the, the bridge, that's um, right there at Azalea Circle, there's another marsh. Mm. So it's, it's not a fast moving, it doesn't seem to have a channel in it, but beyond that marsh there is a channel that connects to Walker's Brook way down and away. Um, but there is a lot of this wood uh, that's fallen down, the trees, there's debris, it builds up and it does block flow. I mean, so what, what if any effect or impingement would this development have on the condition of this? I don't see any connection, really. No, what I said at the beginning is since we're here, since we have started talking about Azalea Circle, that we had a call from a okay. neighbor that said he's concerned about the development. Um, I think that we uh, helped them with that, that, and they designed their water runoff and their storm uh, storm water for the 100-year storm, so that would handle most of their development. But it is going to get looked at again because he did call. He put he put this um, issue on the DPW site, and they have a site called C Click Fix, and he mm -hmm. uploaded some pictures. And he sent it to DPW and uh, the tree warden and myself. So I responded, and I wanted to bring it here tonight because you know we're working in this this general area. And I did talk to Alex again about this, the engineer. And we're you know outside of this project, we'll probably walk this area and see if there's any improvements that can happen that the DPW we can bring to the DPW director. So. So but basically, just to clarify, it sounded like you said that the wetlands behind the Cesalia Circle permit are somewhat isolated from the channel that drains from across Salem Street. It's, these wetlands are isolated by a berm from that channel, which the DPW crossed with a pipe through Ivy Street. I'm just trying to understand that these wetlands drain towards Up into the right. Lake Quantipow at Walker's Brook, the wetlands behind Hortons. All right, so here's here's our lot right, right there. And who owns that lot back there, Chuck? Yeah, this big piece? Yep. Um, sign up. Is there anything downstream that's creating a dam that's making that water back up? Well, here's here's the drainage ditch. Right. Here's the wetland area. All these. I'll try to zoom in a little bit more. But all these. Anything that's not a pine is going to be. This is high where the houses are on either side. Right. It's a little hard to manage this, but. So the water comes down, so it, it kind of gets this, oh, that berm right in here, where this pointer is, okay. and that's Walker's Brook. And then we have this wetland system here, which is you know surrounded surrounded by development. <laughs> hmm. So you know maybe all the runoff is going in there, and we're just adding these two lots here. This so these two lots are what we're talking about with the Azalea Circle. So this gentleman lives in this area here, and he wants to make sure that no additional flooding happens. Uh, like I said, this channel, there's a berm between here, so they're hydraulically connected, but not physically connected. And Where's then it the cuts truck? through, <clears throat> the bridge is right here. Right there. Oh, that's the bridge. Yeah, it doesn't really, 
again, there's no indication of that, but there's that Azalea Circle bridge. Um, so the flow was going from left to right as we're looking at it here. Yeah, the water flow. it's going to go down through here and then right to left. Can you say it flows down to it's Walker's going Brook? Left to right. It's going left to right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let me make sure. Now, didn't the engineer have some questions about the drainage calculations on this, and that was still kind of under review? He's still reviewing it. The only question that, the only major question that's come up is the uh, sewage and which way that's going, how they're connecting, and that's what they're working on now. And that's a bigger issue. Yeah. Okay. So I so think, it's gonna be I think a while they've proved they the drainage. Um, okay. So separate from this project, you're going to go out and see if there's any easy alternatives or options that we keep well, I think since we're out there, we're going to find out what can yeah. happen. But as it's, you know, it's kind of a bowl and it's it's a swamp and it slows down water in the first place. So it's not, there's not really too much, I mean, you can do. So yeah. um, okay. we'll see if there's any obstructions. I know that we work with Mosquito Control to clean out these ditches and maybe that, that will happen. Okay. So. Any questions from the public about this? Hearing none, is there a motion to continue? I make a motion to continue. Is there a circle? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Okay. Chuck, next is Roma Lane, right? Yep. Okay. Um, all right, so let's reopen the notice of intent for note for notice of intent for 44 Roma Lane notice of intent number 270-0713 44 Roma Lane map 50 lot 36 Carol we're going to reopen that and so is uh, Jim here on the grill I, I didn't see anyone so let's continue this to, um, until after, yeah, until after our Lake View. Yeah, and then we can pick up 107 Main Street during this time and <laughs> catch up okay. we need on Howard Street. So if we continue... Make a motion to continue. We, yeah. Uh, notice of intent 270-071344 Roma Lane. Map to, 50, lot no. 36, Carroll. To 735. Okay. 735. Yeah. Okay. So Are you expecting them here around that time? No, but you have to give it time. Yep. Okay. That's not time hasn't been taken yet. Okay. And there's a second? Yep. There's a motion second. and a second. All those in favor? Okay. So you pick up 107 Main Street until we have catch in, catch up with our agenda times. Okay. So now we're going to um, discuss some old new business. Miss something? No, no, no. It's just it's 7:30, right? It's just a list of times. We're not really. It's like it's not. It's just a list. It's just keeping an order. Fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Chuck, you wanted to discuss seven? I did. All right. So we have some old new business, 107 Main Street, Palmer. So uh, I know Michael Palmer's here. Do you want to come up, Michael? And uh, so we got a. Um, we got a call from one of the neighbors that some work was happening on uh, 107 Main Street, and so I went down there and checked it out, and where the Conservation Commission is concerned about work is in this back area that's in back of the dumpsters. So there, there's a dumpster there right now. Um, it's a dumpster right here, and there's a grant berm that was allowed, and we have trees and shrubs planted. So when we got the call from the neighbor that <clears throat> additional work was happening, I went down there, and what I saw, uh, you know, not only a big truck right here, but this probably was extended something like this in this area here. It didn't look like any of the trees on this side had been taken down and 
but these these shrubs were missing in this area. So I sent a letter out to Mr. Uh, to Michael Palmer, and he contacted me and he said he would be happy to come to this meeting and explain what's going on. And um, I think he was going to try to talk to a consultant and find out about. Uh, yeah, just to step back for a second. That when I first got here seven years ago, I heard from his consultant, which was um, Meisner Brim, uh, and they did uh, Border Road for us. So that small project on Border Road, and he had said that he was forced to use the one indicator method that Reading adopted back in the day, where the state says that two indicators of a wetland creates a wetland. But seven years ago or eight years ago, we used to say in Reading that just one would create a wetland or define a wetland. So that would drive all the projects up the slope and the, I don't know, the right, wetland also up. So it, it actually gives a false uh, sense of more wet area or more restricted area uh, on your projects because one indicator is more likely to be found than two. So I think the state said two is needed because they wanted to make sure that that burden of having a wetland on someone's property was taken seriously. So when I got here, we changed that back. Uh, it wasn't because of me, it was because of the commission that sat on at that time. And they said, we'll accept two indicators. So I don't know if you looked into that, Michael, but if you want to add anything to what I've just said and explain your project to us, that would be great. Yeah, so as a result of the abutting neighbor <coughs> raising the complaint, I've re-engaged uh, Jeffrey Brem from uh, Meisner Brem Corp. So he's going to uh, take a look at that area and uh, see uh, what our allowances may be under the new rules of Reddit is when we, when we came in, uh, it was 10 years ago, so we had that two rule indicator. Um, so I'm waiting on him. I, um, I've already engaged him. He's planning on coming to uh, the next planning board meeting, I believe, with me. Um, <clears throat> so I'm on top of it. Uh, but rather than get ahead of myself, I would rather just let him uh, create a report and, and report to you, and, and we'll take whatever uh, instructions he tells me to do to correct or if maybe I have more allowances than I had prior. Is that so? Yeah, and I was just wondering, we did, I did ask you to put up some erosion control while we're waiting. I apologize, but the, uh, the snow one just, uh, yep. a couple things just got in front of me, but I'm, uh, my intention is to put uh, hay bales along that line just to control that area for the time being. I'll figure it out. Uh, so I, I, I'll have that done for you within a week. Sure, and then the only other thing that I would ask is that no work happens out there until we come to a conclusion. So it sounds like you're going to gather your facts and then present an, maybe another application to, uh, I did see a plan that showed, uh, you know, more usable space out there, so you'll probably present something to that effect, yes, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Could you explained, I had come once uh, in the middle of this, um, trying to reapproach that area, but uh, I think we're, in the, I think it was when the commission was deciding whether or not to go from the one to the two or the two to the one, uh, so it was just in that limbo period, but now that some time has gone by and things have adjusted, um, it's a good time to reapproach. Okay. Any questions? Um, I guess the, uh, I have a question. I don't know about anybody else on the board here, but um, were you aware of the standing order of conditions on the property? I was. So um, I've always done my own maintenance on the property, snow yeah. removal, landscaping. But uh, last couple, last two years, I uh, turned it over to a landscaper. So the landscaper started approaching that area and then and out, I think he was unaware, uh, you know, of dying trees and uh, things of that nature. Um, additionally, uh, the turn of the autumn into the winter, um, trees along the line going towards Hopkins, um, I had trimmed back because we were getting birds into the ephus and the uh, uh, stucco siding. So I had those just uh, trimmed and I think that was the catalyst for the neighbor. Um, I don't think we did anything egregious, but obviously, uh, and I didn't do anything intentionally to uh, circumvent the uh, rules that were applied to me. Uh, okay. But 
I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy to correct anything uh, if, if need be. Right. Sounds like there's more to come, and, and yeah. you know, until that point, we're, we're not going to be doing anything. Back we're not. Then. We're not. You, we, we haven't done anything on that land. Okay. Um, as as uh, Allison had pointed out, we do. Uh, I park a vehicle there to block it. But topographically, we're kind of low. And we get a lot of um, debris off Main Street and the abutting properties, yeah. um, and that was part of the landscape of why you thinned out some of the underbrush because it was all getting trapped. And it was just litter and everything, so I think that was his reasoning. Do you do you plow back to that area? I uh, so I plow basically to the perimeter of all points on that lot because it's kind of small. I had um, during a heavy snow season, maybe three or four years ago, I had all out snow, mm -hmm. um, but I don't typically need to. Um, I don't go into that area by any means. I plow basically up to the uh, dumpster enclosure. And I, and I stack at that point. Okay. There's two catch basins right there. Um, but yeah, so I basically plowed the perimeter of what was usable. Just making sure like any erosion control should be you know, protected if you if you are doing something back there. Yeah, no, so um, if we put the hay bales, uh, that will you know create the barrier. But uh, you know, if anyone wants to look, the back line of that concrete dumpster enclosure is as far as I go. Okay. All right, so it, I, I think when uh, when you come in with a new application, the trees that and the shrubs that were taken down have to be replaced somewhere on that property. Um, I know you're going to have a new configuration of what, what you're going to do out there, but that that total amount of, I guess, the conifer trees, they have to go back somewhere. So um, that, and there was, um, when I read the order of condition, it said there's, there's the trees on the corner that I circled, they were supposed to stay, and and they're still there. And so when someone said they were cutting them down, and and Michael said that he was just trimming them, that's that's what I saw. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Thank you. All right. Chuck, do you see Ronald Lane? Okay. Yeah, so um, things like 366 are at the end unless we have a spot in the agenda. So you can just ask or I'll ask. Is someone uh, here to talk about 44 Roma Lane? No? So... I, I so you know what that means, right? I'd like to continue. So... We need to take the next item on the agenda. Yeah. Don't, not right. just because it's past 7.30, we're not taking that yet. We haven't got to the one that's at 7.20. So that would be next. Right, but Bob's not here. Bob. So because Mike would be recusing himself for this, right. our typical 7.20. So Mike can stay there because we're actually we're going to continue that to 8.45. Right. Right. And then we're going to pick up Carol, and then we're going to... Why don't you tell me which which sure. we're in? Uh, yeah, sorry, everyone. It's okay. a very confusing agenda. We had so many moving parts. Um, so the next item on the agenda is uh, uh, Lakeview and Eaton, but we'll only be opening opening that up to continue it to 845 when we hope another member comes in so we can actually discuss that uh, agenda item tonight. So uh, I'd like a motion to continue. 270-0711, uh, 2325 uh, Lakeview and Eaton Street to 845 tonight. So moved. Uh, second on that. Second. All those in favor? Great. So that brings us to... Carol. Do we have... There you go. Oh, Told you it would work. <laughs> You're on the waiting for you. Come okay. on up, dear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, so good timing. Let's reopen the public. They're not here for me, right? Yeah, everybody's here oh, yeah. to see you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. They're, they're all here for you. I hope oh. there's lots of questions for this one. Um, no, not just you. 
Yeah. Let's read with the notice of intent for notice of intent 270 0713, 44 Roma Lane, map 50, lot 36, Carol. This is reopened and conducted under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. The applicant will present their proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator and advisors. The commission will ask questions to the applicant. The public will be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. Um, and at this point, Chuck, would you just reintroduce yourself, please? Sure. Uh, Chuck Taroni, the conservation administrator. Michael Flynn. Anika Scanlon, vice chair. Carl Ciccone. David Pennett. Okay, if you would just, for the record, introduce yourself, please. Sure. Uh, Jim McGrail, attorney for the Carols, Matt okay. and Susan. Okay, welcome back. We, um, um, myself, um, Ms. Longley, Mr. Cironi, and Mr. Panett did a site visit Tuesday. Um, and we saw, we saw some green tape that looked to be what the orange line is. I'd say. Um, and we saw a couple of trees with flagging, but I'm not entirely sure whether those were trees to stay or trees to go. So. A combination of um, both. Do you want ex me to explain everything on there, or do you want uh, go Jim it. to do that? Um, Okay, so uh, so we went out to the site on uh, the 22nd, and uh, we do the property. We asked the property owner to not only stake where he wanted to develop this area, but to number the stakes, and uh, so we would have some reference points uh, when, we, when we went out there. So uh, as the commission stood on the sidewalk because of the snow, they sent me down back and um, called out instructions. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what we noticed first is that stake, this you can't see it, but uh, stake number six right here seemed to be, uh, if we line that up with a tree that was approximately, and I think it was this area here, um, it would be saved. And stake number four seemed to be where. Um, there were, there were three test pits done by Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, and stake number four lined up with the center one. And the way I think about this, I'm not sure about the commission, but definitely wet, definitely dry, right on the line. So that would be considered well, but that's my opinion. Um, the commission hasn't ruled on that. So we came up, Jim came to the office after we went out there, we missed him at the site visit, and we came up with these lines. So at the last meeting, this red line represents we, what we looked at um, and what we agreed to when we were talking about it. And, oops, see everything's different here, yeah, there you go. So that's the line we talked about before. Um, it starts out at the three trees and ends up right in the corner. And this was a result of that meeting. It's a conceptual meeting location. Yeah, and we went out to try to verify it. That's what the stakes and the flags were all about. So we came back. Um, And so that's what the red line is all about. This yellow line was the first line I drew when we were talking about it because I got the message from the commission that up in this area, it's it's going to end up being pretty dry. So if Mr. Carroll wanted to turn this line in and create more area here for his for his yard for usable space then that would be okay. And then I caught up with that post number six, brought it straight down, and then came across with number four, and then tried to tie it in towards back here. 
and I think after we talked about that, that this was an area also where it was questionable whether there was some wetland indicators. So that ends up how we came up with the blue line. So with the exception of the blue line can go down in this area here. Our best, the best run at what would work from what the site visit looked at was that blue line with the tailpiece heading towards the neighbor's house. Um, I can't tell you how far these things are from the wetlands because, you know, again, we're, we're talking about something very conceptual here. Just so the note I got from him is everything stayed out of the 25-foot uh, zone of natural vegetation and for the most part stayed out of the 35-foot no structure zone with the LRs. What, is it the yellow line or the blue line that was proposed? So I think that Mr. Carroll is proposing the orange line, and I think he just told you that he, in his opinion, you stay out of these significant areas. But what he referenced was, uh, uh, so what we do is we send people out to identify a wetland, but that wetland then has to be verified by the commission. This commission never verified that wet line, wetland line, so it's it's not official. Right, and, and I think that's where we're at. That's right. But this goes back to the Oxbow yeah. line that I think at the last meeting we ascertained that we, for the pool area, we would the commission would accept that part, and this was all with the area in question was to the left of the um, edges there for, for back over the barry, whatever you want to call it. And so that's what the dis I guess not dispute, but that's what the discussion has been around. So that did draw about the red line at our last meeting. We talked about that at length and then we set up the site visit. When he laid it out, he laid it out in orange. Um, so that's now where we are. They're away, they, as they, they mentioned to the uh, commission, that will be away this week. So I've only up to Chuck and I met, I forwarded them a copy of this plan, and they if they, they thanked me and said, great, when we get back, we can sit down and, and talk about it. But I just wanted to come this evening in case there was any questions that you had and that you wanted me to bring back to them, or, or if I could explain anything further that um, the commission may want to ask. Maybe you want to add another line. To be honest with you, for my, from going out to the site and the number of times I've been out there and, and when I went out there the other day, just looking at these lines here, the one that I am most comfortable with is the yellow line on this plan. Um, I am definitely not in favor of the orange line, not even anywhere as close to it. Um, the, I'm not even comfortable with the red line. Um, and I, and I, one of the things I refer back to is you look at the, the wetland line that was accepted for the property that is to the left of this. And as the property line comes up, um, the wetland actually comes up across, it comes up at an angle, which would probably meet somewhere near where the, where the orange line, the red line, and the blue line meet on this particular plan, if you extrapolated the wetland line that was coming across from the adjacent property. So to the orange line that's in, in here is, I think, is way off. Um, like I said, I, I, at this point, the one that I would be comfortable with is the yellow line that's on this plan. Dave, Dave you know, I went out to the site a little too early, um, but I, I saw that and I, I called up Chuck just to kind of give him my thoughts, but I, I tend to agree with you. Um, I think I'd be, you know, I, I think that's my starting point. I mean, that, that's what I feel comfortable with. You know, I'm, I'm less concerned about that dip that we've got that Chuck you were referring to and the difference between the blue and the yellow yep. on the, the north side, just because the way we've got right now, there's going to be some, some, you know, landscape to the yard already to be part of that pool um you know i, I think i'd be open 
and, and again, I, I'm doing this based off just memory to discuss this section right here. But yeah, I'm mean, not yeah, this zone. But ultimately, Dave, I, I would agree with you mm -hmm. that the, the line I'm most comfortable with, comfortable with is the yellow, and I think that's that's making some concessions yeah. still. And, and I would I would even say for this line here that if you were to come with a radius similar to that blue line and maybe make that radius actually join with where the, the orange yellow line joined, I would even be kind of comfortable with that, um, you know, rather than making that come in a the loop there. Uh, but You're saying some sort of arc from where the orange and yellow line hit? Correct. Yes. Yeah. You know, oh no, no, from the from the yellow line, yeah, back there that it, it even come, you know. So this this area right here is less of a concern. That's I no, I would I would not be in there. I would not go in there. Like I said, I the one that I I would be more con, more comfortable with at this time is the yellow line. I mean, if you came at a hard, I just was to get at, a, at a hard, yeah, right. Oh, so this, right, that you yellow. You need to flatten that out to make right. more of a connection. So you would be okay with being in between the red and the yellow line now? The reason? In between the red and which line? Red, this yellow, so you'd be yeah. okay with being in there. Some, somewhat in there, you know, so you, so you wouldn't have to come because I just look at the, the inside corner of that volute that's there that, that might be somewhat of a concern as you put the rocks in there. You need something well, realistically constructible. Right, right. Can I just add two things to this? Um, uh, Becky Longley wanted me to give her feedback and that was um, when she was sitting on the sidewalk and she was lined up with the first stake to the right on the rock wall off that line. Yeah, I'm sorry, no one more to the left. Yeah, while she was standing along the sidewalk looking straight perpendicular from the sidewalk to that line, to that stake, she said, her her sense based on topography and knowing the test pit history and, and the history there she would she was happy with um, a straight angular try kind of like a giant triangle from right. from that spot in the sidewalk to that back end of the orange line to the right so um, yeah, she was she was content with like that, like so. Something inside of everything else. We're drawing. No, we're drawing all hard. these fictitious. <laughs> it's basically what's there. It's like Theory, that. This, this, this was kind of what. Was. Yeah, but this was kind of what Becky said. She could possibly be okay with. Um, just, just going from here to here. Yep. Um, you know when it. When it comes right down to it, the other thing I want to comment on is, um, is you know, all these lines, we can look at them, we can speculate, we can tell you what we speculate based on our knowledge of the site and our experience, what we think would be the right um, area to work in. But when it all comes down to it, um, you know, there's existing 35-foot setbacks on this property plan, and I still don't know what this sketch looks like truly drawn to scale in these setbacks. So, you know, I, we can give you our opinions, but at this point, until it gets onto a plan and we can compare it with the 25 and the 35-foot, I, you know, well, kind of can't move forward. We understand that. Okay. And, and we talked about the last step, but the, so the issue was, that's where this is, gets a little poofy because we have this oxbow line. I know. We're good with from here to here. And so we're trying to reach a compromise in here. I, I, just, sketch. I just like to stop you. I, I just want to know where Mr. Carroll's thought of going all the way out there to the very back corner and having a hard 90 degree corner on the back. How was that, how was that a compromise? 
I didn't see that as any compromise at all because he's going right into the teeth of where the whole question of the wetlands was in that back corner. Well, if he's not here, but I guess the answer would be, if, if I could speculate on the answer, because he's not here, would be that he originally wanted all, all of this. So from his perspective, he's, give, you know, he's given up this, and he's given up this, and he's given up all of this. That would be, but at the same time, in fairness to the commission, we talked about this at our last meeting. So, you know, again, it's. But we're drawing lines on a, a page with no true problem. Right, that's that's why we take it out with I'm flags. I'm not disagreeing with you, and we're, 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 we're just trying to, if we're, if we're using, if we're trying to amend this lot, come to some kind of, and then we can sketch it. That's what we're, right. rather than spend money. And the, and the feedback you got tonight was a result of us going to the site, seeing in real space on the pro on the parcel what that line looked like. Yeah. yeah. You know, so this is our feedback to well, that. that that's so. And, and I'm, so I guess, so, right. so yeah. two so, members are in yeah. this area, uh, yeah. one member's in this area. Yeah, and I, I'm so, not so, I mean, I would almost ask to, because of the wetlands, because of the soil and the, and the, and the vegetation, I, I don't even understand. And I know Becky really well. I'm not, and if I think about what I know about the site, I don't understand that line. Are you sure well, it looks, you got that it line? Looks, you know, maybe she was standing at the end of the orange. Well, you know, maybe she was standing to the... Yeah, that kind so of, that maybe she was over. Maybe I'm. I'm wondering what, what, she what was your saying. line is, and then they. Uh, and I'm in agreement with the yellow. The yellow. With the yellow line. Yeah. And and actually, yeah. I I heard what Becky said differently. I heard Becky say that she was two yeah. two stakes from the intersection of the orange line to the right, and two stakes up this way. And if you look at that yeah. as an stakes, intersection, stakes yeah. that's about where. The blue line, the, the red line, and the yellow line meet. That's 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 I thought where Becky was straight up to the sidewalk, yeah. and she but wanted to save that tree. That was correct. Yes. Out, yes. she definitely does. So she's out by like the yellow. And that or, yellow line is supposed to represent saving that tree that's out by Roma Lane. Yeah, it's out there. I, I don't yeah. know where it is, but even if if somehow it could be saved somehow, you know. If if it turns, you know, so this is again, this is what they're they're hoping for. We don't know your plan, and it, it turns out that that tree actually can't be saved because of some reason. And then you bring that to us at this point. So I, I think the yellow line seems to be standing out a little bit more than. I would agree. All right. So so the whole commission agrees on the yellow line. Uh, so it's up. So yeah. so the commission is telling us it's here. Yep, the yellow line is what you know we should be working off of. Now I have to go meet with the carols and say, hey, you want to proceed with this thing? Okay. You know, the commission's under the yellow line, and the next step would be to provide a you know a sketch, an actual engine, a stamp drawing, or something of the sort with the yellow line on it. Yeah. Right, the yellow line in the tree. Because I don't think that curve catches the truth. Okay. 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 An understanding okay. of the proposed grade. You know, obviously, a, a big key of that plan is an understanding of the proposed grading to you know, how much how much you're planning to, to go up, what those rock, how high those rocks have to be. Okay. So we understand how much the Right. Sure. The other thing is, is that if they if they wanted to, it might be advisable before they get an engineer and stamp drawn for this is just to go and restake that out with the, the stakes and the tape. That's easier to do that. Yeah, we might do it. I think for them, and I, and I appreciate that, but I think from their perspective, I, I mean, the Commission by Reels has been at this so long, they'd like to be in a position to be able to get this ill in this summer. So, and you probably don't want to hear about it too much longer than you've already heard about it. So, we're all kind of going in the same spot. But if it makes sense to have it, restake it, have another site visit, I'll talk to them about that well, and Chuck and I, we can talk about it. Um, Does that make sense to you, Chuck? To restake it? Yeah, I, I think it would. I think it would work, yeah. only because we were so different, on, you know, and, and needed another meeting. But do you do you guys feel like that works? 
I mean, I think not only for us, but the, the carols too, to see what, what we're talking right. about. Yeah. If this was a, you know, engineered plan, we could, we could would, say, no, it's not agree. needed. And so just to that point, clearly we drew a line last meeting that on a piece of paper that didn't necessarily show up where we, everybody thought it was going to show up. So yeah. if it helps everybody to get it on the same, on the same page of where this is going to be, to, to kind of restake and flag that, I, yeah. I think that's just in everybody's best interest. Would, you, would that, would that, um, would that site visit not occur until the day before the next meeting, or could right. it be done sooner than that? Right, that would um, we if have you need to have a special site, site visit, site I think, yes. Yeah. That would be the only thing, because we'd like to be in a position to bring you a sketch drawing at the, the February meeting, if we could. If we can't, we can, we can make we can opportunity to go there. It depends how quickly they can well, get gonna, restaked. I think they're back this weekend, so I, you know, I can say, hey. You know. It depends on availability of who's who can make the site visit and who and wants to And it could be there the for as long as it well, doesn't We don't have to have a site visit. You, you could get out there as soon as possible, well. then everybody and we'll, go yeah, on their survive. own time. I went, yeah. I went out yeah. before yeah. 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 and I was able to see exactly where this was at. And then they'll tell okay. me, and I'll get back to you. Okay, great. So just number, number them again, so we can move them if we have to, or tell you which one we're. We don't have yellow line. And just let Chuck know when it's set up. The yellow yeah, line. When I go out there, the yellow line is more money. Yeah, that's not good. Do you have a motion to continue? Make a motion to continue. Second. Before Roman line. All those in favor? Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank, right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Chuck. Based on this uh, interesting schedule we have, which way are we heading to next? Uh, this would be in, uh, Howard Street now. Okay. Do we have a notice of intent number for this one? Yeah. Or is it still? Zero seven one four. One four. Zero seven one four. Okay, that makes sense. Um, okay, let's open. We're going to open the public hearing for notice of intent um, two seventy dash oh seven one four. One thirty five, one thirty nine, and one forty nine are Howard Street. Map ten lots seventy five, seventy six, and seventy seven. Do you want? By Infrastructure Holdings LLC, Greenwood. Um, so that is now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. The hearing will be conducted in the same way as the others. The applicant will present their proposal. The commission will receive reports from our administrator, technical advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will then be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. For any new or latecomers, there's an attendance sheet at the doorway. Please sign in. Um, so that we know you attended tonight. Um, and at this time, um, let's introduce ourselves, starting with Chuck. Uh, Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Michael Flynn. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Carl Sicconi. David Finette. Okay, and would you introduce yourself, please? Sure, um, I'm William Hall, with Civil Design Consultants, representing the applicant on this notice. Can I ask you, um, before you start, I get, can I just have a show of hands who's here for this particular? Okay, thanks. Just for the sake of visibility, can I ask you to put the board up on the shelf? Sure. Um, just to sort of maximize visibility, so if people want to go up and look at it, you can feel free to do so. Okay, thank you. Okay. Proceed. So, to start out, uh, this is part of a proposal that we, a definitive subdivision that still has to go through planning. We've applied with the planning division um, for community development. And we're, we have a hearing on the 11th with that, so we're in no way expecting to close this time. Okay. Just to start with that. Um, 
So with the existing site, what we have is three lots, and there are two existing single-family dwellings that are in the front of the lot. And to the rear of the site, we have a bordering vegetated wetland, and that was delineated by Norse Environmental Services. Um, there is a drainage swale, I guess you could call it, that is somewhere through this area here. Um, in the notice of intent package, there is an opinion from Norse Environmental Services on uh, if they think that swale is jurisdictional or not, and they do not. They do not think it has the indicators to be jurisdictional, uh, whether under the Act or under your bylaw. Um, and to get the full work, we have within the 100 foot buffer zone are two dwellings, an infiltration basin, and a portion of the roadway for six lot subdivision. There, there are no foundation holes within the 35 foot buffer. Here, and there's no disturbance proposed within the 25 foot buffer. Uh, we propose a tree line through here. We have located all the trees on the site, and there's a siltation barrier proposed behind the tree line throughout the entire buffer zone of the project. Um, that's what I have for the presentation of what we're doing within the uh, jurisdictional areas. If there are any questions. Um, so, just a quick question off of that. So, this is for. So, this notice of intent covers construction of the road, the drainage structures, and the construction of the houses. Of two of the houses, yes. Of two of the houses. Two, which, yes. Which two are you asking of the two? Uh, this. So lot three and lot four. Yes, correct. Um, Okay, and the roadway because of the drainage. Yeah, there's a portion of the cul-de-sac, uh, probably about a third of the cul-de-sac through here is within the 100 foot buffer zone. Is the cul-de-sac sloped towards the road or towards the wetland? So the cul-de-sac slopes towards the wetland and we have a swale that runs along the end of the cul-de-sac that will pick up any drainage and direct it into the infiltration basin. So no roadway drainage is directed towards the wetland without going through the infiltration basin first. Mm, okay, okay. So it's a riprap apron. Presumably going to be overland flow toward the sediment four bay in lot four. That's correct. Chuck, have you done a site visit? I, I was out there when they did the uh, test pits, and I was disappointed on Tuesday that we did not have access to the site because of the snow. And in particular, I did want to look at that man-made um, ditch. And I was out there, and I did ask uh, Norris to check it out. And um, it, it did have uh, indicators of sensitive fern and the soils, you know, I don't know. Yeah. The, the soils weren't obvious, but it, but it wasn't checked out thoroughly. But we did have several clusters of sensitive fern. And, uh, you know, I apologize to the applicant, but I got some pictures late this afternoon. I didn't have a chance to send them to you. But I have some pictures of uh, a ponding area. And uh, this, these pictures are from 149 Howard uh, <coughs> Street. And there's an area just beyond their driveway that ponds all the time. And they were showing me, hey, you know, look at this, it floods. And this is a ponding area. And this uh, man-made ditch, you know, relieves the water down into the back, into the wetland. And I think just beyond it, what I saw was, um, was I saw some sensitive fern. But it was winter time, so uh, I'll just get into the pictures now. Here's some of the ponding areas. Um, and one of these is going to be sensitive fern. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to play this. <coughs> Uh, 
Yeah, so this one here seems to show what I would say is sensitive fern from this distance. Yeah. It just looks... It's got the look. It's got I the look. I was just to the street, the, these pictures. You know what I'm saying? I do. Hold on one second. Great question. Sorry. Um, let me get back to, here we go here. Those pictures are taken. Oh, yeah, one of my favorite things is this. Back up a bit. Um, those pictures are taken in where the arrow is in this direction towards this proposed house on lot one towards the back here. Where's the existing house? The existing area. house. I don't know. It's not on this sheet. It is actually, oh, Chuck. Okay. Yeah. You can right. kind of see it. Oh, it's right next to it? Yeah. Okay. Can you see? Oh, yeah. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Bring it over first. Zoom in. Chuck, just... Yeah. Where, where is this? Can you almost draw a line where the center line of the, the drainage is? There's, what plan is that on? It shows it on uh, the existing Yeah. yeah. So, uh, right there. Yeah, so. Right where? This drainage ditch is right, right here. This is the man-made drainage ditch right in that area. Oh. So it's... Was this, the survey really oh, hasn't picked up any, like, grading? No, the survey has it. It's on dash that's nine. That's seeing. Okay. Mike, do you see it? I see the, the dash line. Yeah. And then I'm trying to get an they idea. They called it out, right? Yeah. And the yeah. yeah. existing yeah. man-made dish. Yeah. Man -made dish. If you go on one sheet that, so sheet two, second. This was this was what I was looking for. On is like I see the line. I guess so it goes off. What, what, what exactly? It's. Um, and did you say it's probably why, why, why was it? Yeah. Why Towards the wetland is. It gets deeper. Almost disappears as it's going up towards Howard Street, and you lose it in the shrubs. Okay. Uh, for sure. So, okay. Like, it, you know, the lines obviously stands out. I wasn't sure if there'd be any sort of contour that would, should stand I, I out. Thought, or You know, when you, this first came in, I thought there would be uh, some sort of contour that would have been picked up, but it, but it wasn't. It, so. Yeah, it's just too shallow to get at this yeah. scale. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not something you would walk past if you were coming up from the wetland. Yeah, you so it's, it's, it's defined enough to know, defined. you know, you know what you're looking at. As a matter of fact, when I first saw it, I walked all the way up to Howard Street to see if there was a culvert there. So that on the site, you know, on the non-existent site visit, that's one of the things I wanted to check out. Yeah. And of course, on the site visit, we also look at each flag, and we determine by vegetation and hydraulic soil whether we agree with the placement of each flag. That was also something that we were unable to do. Yeah. And I was out there on the test pit day, which you know was not a day that we were looking at the wetland flags. So uh, there, were, there were other things going on, and there was heavy machinery around. So um, that, that did not happen. When, what, what are the dates of the test pits? They were in October. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a lot of a lot of missing information, a lot of information we need to still fill in. Right. And I and I would also ask if we with this plan 
or this application, do we get a tree inventory of the trees that are out there um, that are over six inches? So in DBH. Uh, that's where we have located on this plan. Yeah. Are you looking for the ones that are coming down to, and then to work with our tree policy to either replace those uh, tree for tree or two shrubs for each tree? Okay. So, and that's on the conservation division page. I want that policy? Um, I also like to get since we're all doing the roadway and lot three and four. I would like a plan of just lot three and four, four something yeah. blown up so we can see it. And you can put in the trees that are being taken, added, landscaping, any of that. Um, I did think that on the, I think it's lot three, I thought there was an opportunity to move that further away from the 35 foot line. Uh, I second that. Yeah. Move what? The house. The house. Lot three. So I don't even on lot three. There's some utilities crossing the 35 foot line. The some of the connections. The water. Yeah. Gas. That put them too close to the white line for a setback between two and three. Say that again, Dave. Can you Would explain? That put them, <clears throat> if you move that so it's further out from the 35 foot no build zone, is that going to make the house on lot three too close to the lot line lot two for the setback? Mm -hmm. What can be rotated? We're not worried about if they can't fit the house. They, yeah. You know, maybe that house doesn't work. So, uh, I'll have to double check on that, but I believe that we are against the setbacks with what we have there. Um, and we are proposing it nearly 40 feet away from the uh, weapons in that location. And that, yeah, and you're not proposing, so I see the tree row right next to lot three by the corner of the house, and to me that says you're just going to leave the natural. Is that true, or is this, this is why I'm asking for a landscape plan? What ends up happening to that side of the house that's away from the driveway and, you know, access? There's, there's also not much of a yard there, which I can't imagine would be the case. So that's another reason why I'm asking for the landscape plan. I just want to know what's going on in its entirety out on lot three. Yeah. This is so what I would just add to that too, you know, typically we we'll wanna know, you know, is there exits on the back side or the, the short side, you know, is there any sort of deck or patio or something proposed out walk in there? Walk out proposed. Um, to make sure we understand, you know, exactly where everything is relative to the wetland. Um, as this is actually being proposed. Because you're right, Chuck, I, I look at this this plan that you got up, I say, well, it, there's not a whole lot of space there. Is that really what it's, we're, we're planning on having it look like? Don't we also yeah. look at is, is, um, can, we, can you just, uh, I mean, I, I hear at the DRT that these are just, you know, big boxes and you, you might not be building something that big. So maybe on this one here, it's going to be a smaller house. So we can just show that. Part of the right yeah, we could show we'll look into that. But I would like to just point out that we did locate all the trees. And it's nothing. I don't I believe that the only trees here that would have to be removed. And I believe there's another one in here. But otherwise, this area is clear of trees with the exception of the one that's up near this lot three label, which would remain. So that would be the limit of the tree clearing of greater than six inches. And we have our facilitation barrier which would be a little bit more in that area. Well we would want to know anything greater than six inches within the hundred foot buffer zone. Yes we have that all located we can mark those that would be coming out. I think another question if I can yeah, sure say what you were saying um, is roof drainage. Um, how how's that to be handled? So is it going to be infiltrated? Is it going to? Yeah, so it's, it's overland flow that would get to the infiltration basin. For all the houses? Correct. Let me ask you a question on the, uh, on the, the, the drainage here and the, the, um, the swales. I noticed that on the 
proposed house on lot four that the slab is at 159.5 and also that the um, the um, overflow of your detention basin is at the same exact height 159.5 at the square lens that's in the back of lot four and lot five is at 160 which is only half a half a foot that's above the flood stage of both of those re water retention ponds is that so, any at all concern to you that there might be a lake in someone's backyard so that's for the 100 year storm overflow um, we also have an outlet structure here that has various outlets on it there's one as low as 158 40 so uh, we wouldn't anticipate that this would maintain water higher than 158 40 for that outlet Commission, you have any uh, idea? Of so what? one second, oh, sir. I'm sorry. Um, the commission actually speaks first, and then we turn it over to the audience. Yeah. Uh, um, I was, if I was going to ask for an uh, operation maintenance plan. Do you have that developed yet for this site? Uh, we have one for the stormwater system, but we'll be looking for. Just. Uh, you know who's taking care of it in the interim between uh, you know when it's finished and when the town takes it over and I was going to ask if the town has looked at this plan and are they okay with the access you provided that five foot flat area on top of the berm um, because I'm wondering if they want to drive over to it and if, if you've had any conversations with the engineering department you haven't received any okay so I had just a couple more questions and, and um, so the contour the finished grades um, behind the proposed house on lot four they're kind of curving around I know those are one foot contour intervals they're kind of curving around um, I guess I'm just wondering what's the what's uh, why were those drawn like that um, were they to meet a certain elevation walkout in the back, or? That's exactly what it was, to, to make a walkout in the back there, mm -hmm. instead of bringing in more fill in that area. Okay, and the, um, I'm not exactly sure, FES one through four, are those, um, are those just drainage pipes underneath driveways? Um, do you know what I mean? Yes, in this area. Yeah. Yes, so because of, um, as you know, that drainage swale that's down here, um, because of that, we can't raise that area up too much without blocking the drainage that's currently going through there. So in order to not flood out adjacent properties, we're proposing these culverts underneath the driveway so that we maintain that drainage that goes through the property. So it's an attempt to some degree to kind of replicate the drainage sweat. Yeah, yeah it's to, to provide a drainage path to get to the drainage basin. What are the sizing of those pipes? Uh, is it in a detail? Uh, yeah, it's on the plan. I believe they are 12 inch. Oh, yeah, 12 inch. Yeah, 12 inch. Yeah. Okay. It's up to the left. Thanks. It's a lot of plan information. Yeah, it, yeah. With the structure, with detail. those structures in front of each house, is that something you expect the town to also take over? Um, that's something that we've been back and forth on, and I guess we'll see how those with planning and engineering and see what their preference is. Okay. Um, any more questions from just the from the, at this the point? drainage and the sizing of your uh, infiltration basin in the back? So that is sized for all six properties you're cur currently showing? That's correct. So um, generally because that's that's obviously a, the sizing of that is, uh, the sizing of the houses is a key part of the sizing of that. Is it, the, the intent here obviously, you know, you're, we're showing boxes just like we talked about. 
they're going to be no bigger than this. You know, the, the plans for the other ones may change, but the square footage or the area of the homes is essentially the impervious area is going to remain the same for all, each one of the other lots as well that aren't part of the submittal, or is there going to be, uh, or is, you know, how much capacity do you have for changes in impervious area on those other lots? So that's what we have to check when we get um, a final house design. We have to make sure that that would work with our drainage calculations. And if it needed to be changed, be smaller, then that's what we have to do. But so for the other four houses, essentially, you're not coming back before the commission. So I guess I'd want to make sure that we've got, and we've, we've had this issue before on other, uh, I think the, I forget which ones, but where, you know, essentially we wanted to make sure. Yeah, Veterans Way. Veterans Way, yeah. yeah. Um, that, that whatever is proposed, because that wouldn't necessarily come back in front of the commission. Um, but it's obviously a, a, a very big part of the wetland protection. Yeah, we, yeah, we would have to make sure that that impervious area would be able to be put through the infiltration basin without it overflowing as designed. Um, and then just on lot three is basically great. Is there? I know you're cutting it tight to that 35 foot line, or, or just inside. Of it. I guess inside of that a little bit. Is that really going to lead to that drainage basin there? Is that how, I mean, the, the contours. Let's see how it's going to pick it up here. Is it? Right? It's going to go to the wetland, wetland correct? It's going to go to the wetland. Uh, which runoff are you talking about? Some of it. What? Uh, a lot three. So I'm looking at the. So a portion, a portion of the cleared area will, but the intention is to, to get the roofs, whether by roof drain or otherwise to go to the swale. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I guess the, the one other thing I would have is, you know, knowing that this is going to go to another meeting, you know, I would like to, to try to get out and, you know, have, just like we've done other times with Norris, and actually open some holes in that drainage as well. Good luck. Yeah. All right. Uh, I mean, they, they've gone out before on... on a site visit and stuff. no they have that would be great I'm just not sure that they're going to be digging now I mean oh, the frost yes, with the, the snow yes. yeah no uh, I, the snow is not a problem but I think the ground's frozen too and vegetation is probably a key part of this considering that the current condition right up that said that Norris came up with said this soils don't support it so we're going to need to find water and, and vegetation yeah so. All right. Now, any more questions from the Is there any other impervious walkways that are going to these houses? Uh, we are proposing any at the moment. And where would the front doors be? Like, there wouldn't be anything leading to a front door? A lot of these are um, actually garage unders. Okay. Um, but it's something that we can look into and whether that becomes like a pervious walkway or something of the sort. Okay. Okay, I think that's the bulk of the questions we have. Um, any questions from the public? Yeah. So, sir, would you just introduce yourself, please? <laughs> I can talk to you better, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm sure the commission is aware of the... Can oh. you, I'm, I'm sorry, can you give your name and your yes. address, please? Yes, Ronald Petron, I live 119 Howard Street. Thank you. Which is to the right of this property. All right, it's uh, two doors down from uh, back lot from five. It's not the next house, it's the house down, down from there. Uh, but there have been um, uh, problems in the past with uh, right next to the, uh, the house, right next to where the storm drain is, it right. runs out and runs over to toward the west property. Right. And I know there's been a lot of problems with with that, and uh, that that's been before the commission and everything. And my concern, and probably a lot of uh, other, other people's concern that are here, is what's it going to do to that? I, I mean, how.
now and and uh, we had that concern when they built the houses to our to the right of our house they put in uh, uh, two, uh, two houses there one in back and then on this further it's off uh, summer of two um, and we have to, I guess, kind of look to to the commission to say, are you going to protect the current uh, um, homeowners and their property that it, it doesn't get flooded any more than what it does um, already? Yeah, that's um, that's a question we get almost every <laughs> almost every meeting, and then, it's a valid then, question. Then, it, then the streak and is continuing. And um, and I understand what you're saying. I know. I know the drainage behind your house. Um, that's why we have a lot of engineering review of the drainage. That's why we're asking extra questions about the drainage. Um, and that's part of what we try to see in the calculations they come up with, is we're vetting that based on the calculations and based on the modeling, that it meets the performance standards in the law. So, so that's process we're going through to make sure that you know that that's looked at and dealt with. Chuck, did you want to say something? Uh, well, yeah, the engineer is going to look at that, and no runoff can go out onto the street. So, is that, that was your question? It's going to go out on the street and then down the street? Well, no, no. I, I mean, the, the, I have other concerns too. How the street was just done probably two years ago. Mm -hmm. Water, sewer, and everything. What, what's going to happen with the sewage uh, that comes from here? So the applicant will have to take out a bond, and the engineering department will review the sidewalks, the street, and any any issues that come up. And if they're not, uh, if something's happened, they'll use the bond to fix it, or the applicant will fix it. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of promises. I, mean, I saw the house. Well, the bonds, but that you know, backed up by money. But it, it it it's a full process, and it's going through conservation and planning at the same time. If you attend both meetings, you'll understand the uh, you know the specificity of the review that each department gives this. So we should be able to un you know uncover any problems prior to the applications being approved. I know. But, you know, it's, it's always okay to, you know, call, email, come to the meetings and ask the questions because, you know, sometimes we see something on the plan and we've seen it so many times, we're just skipping over it. And a lot of people think that we didn't pay attention to that, but it's, but we've kind of verified it in our, in our well, own I, I, When they built the houses next to us, uh, yeah. there was not supposed to be any kind of soil. Mm -hmm. Well. I guess it's maybe how you how you define it. It seemed like there was one, uh, but uh, you know, I, I'm not an engineer, and, and so I can I guess say, well, uh, you know, there was one, there wasn't one. But. Yeah, we did have um, a question from some from some other people that came into the office. A lot of people did come into the office and look at the plans, and a lot of the questions were about flooding, yeah. containing the water in, you know, on their property. And, and, you know, I'm not sure if those are two paved roads or, or dirt roads that access the two houses that, that are right here. Um, but, are you during your, when you did your review? Are you keeping all the water on your property, uh, or is it going to pool up and spill over? I mean, I understand already at 149, there's water right there on on this property. Um, I don't I don't think you're going to correct that. But um, what's on this first lot one? How is how is that going to interact with with what's going on? Because you built up that back corner. And that's exactly where those pictures are. So right where it says lot one, you've 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 raised that up by three feet, and there's nothing happened at 149. So now we have we kind of have a pond between the corner of lot one and the two corner of lot, lot two, and the elevation of what is this 163? Are you meeting 163 there? 
Yes. Yeah. So then um, that goes back to <coughs> having the culverts under the driveway. We're maintaining this drainage that goes through here because we can obviously only um, alter to this corner on our property. Um, so where this is real shallow, mm -hmm. this 162, that kind of drove us to have to put these in and maintain that so it continues to flow that direction and not not create. So so this is a low spot right here. And you've, you've built this up, and I guess this was a low spot too. Yeah. So, but in the pictures, it appears that there's something going on in between, uh, maybe a higher area. But you know, I see that this is built up and this is built up, and this looks so obvious. This, this might be a problem. Yeah, yeah, we just want to make sure that you yeah, you've taken that into consideration. Chuck, without this, this whether it's just whale or just this mechanism to help the water travel at a faster pace, now it's we're asking it all to move much slower over land because that swale isn't there. Get it on. So um, obviously we can only alter on our property, but what we're proposing is not a, a fill through here. We're proposing to maintain the existing grades through that area um, and direct it to that culvert. So where does this so the swale line on this? It's not on this sheet. But we're at, we're at about 162 for this corner, and the inlet to our uh, culvert is 161 and change. So there is positive pitch in that direction. So there's that high spot right there, which I'm presuming is exactly where I drew that. Uh, on 149. This helps anymore. And there was another picture. Yeah. Chuck, that looks flat. Mm -hmm. well, so I think we actually have that fence located on our Fill in the leaves. Doesn't it? Sure, let's go to the plan. That's why there's no contour. Right. Is that it right there? The dotted line? No. You go to the end. Want to show you? Um, hold on a It's existing uh, two. Yeah. So it's back. Draw right. that in. So there's the fence, the end of the fence, and then there's, and then just in front of it is where I thought I could see the wetland indicators. So there's the fence, so that must be kind of right in this right area. There. Yeah. And there's a high spot here. Yeah, and there's that man-made drainage ditch right there. That's, that kind of almost gets into this area here. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty evident that we need more evaluation of the drainage ditch, whether it um, is, is jurisdictional. Um, and we need to verify that wetland line. And those are really the, those are some of the cornerstones of what Drivers. we do. Yeah. What yeah. is the drainage ditch that you're talking about? Is it, so, is it, uh, what is it, what is it draining? And where is it, where is it? I, I have not seen it, because oh, I haven't, okay. I haven't seen the, the property without snow, but, you know, if you can see this plan, so this is the property. Right. There's a dashed line right about Oh yeah, he had here. A, it was on there before, right. Yep, and so somebody must have tried to improve the drainage from their backyard. You know, they say man, existing man-made ditch. I don't know who made it, but somebody wanted to improve the drainage toward the wetland. Um, so now there's a man-made so it's nothing, that's maintained, it's nothing that's maintained by the town or anything like that? It's private property. It wouldn't have been maintained okay. by the town. 
So it was probably a high point. I assume it was up here and it was puddling up here and I don't know. Somebody I don't know how it came to be, to but kind of create a way for the water to drain off. You know, I I could assume it was an eager resident who the lived there and the wanted to improve field. the drainage and just decided to no start outlet. digging and is there an digging outlet? Outlet? There's 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 there goes that out towards the road to the door. But as the applicant said in his proposals, he's attempting to continue that drainage by putting piping underneath the sidewalks, that the driveways that would cut the existing drainage. So he's proposing to put piping underneath driveways to kind of continue the existing drainage. So other other questions? I know there are a lot of hands up. Um, Please. Um, yeah, there you go. Eight Milton Road. Um, I would like to respectfully ask the commission to consider blocking the land um, between winter and spring, particularly for vernal pools, which only exist during those times. And, we, and there's so much nature in that area, the yeah. hawks, I mean, all the protected animals. And as far as just, again, with the, the drainage, um, just being on Milton Road, and it seems like those 100-year storms come along a little bit more than, <laughs> as we all know, yeah. The water from the houses from County Road all come down, and when there's a big storm, you can see them actually going in between the houses on Milton Road and through our backyards down um, onto Milton Road, which only has one storm drain at the end of the road. And if you look at Milton Road and the the angle of the um, the asphalt on the road is very much um, beat up related to water uh, that just sits on the road. And then that ends up going across the street to the other houses on Milton, and then it all goes back into that area. So it's a real concern for our, our uh, one, for our properties, but also just for nature. I mean, we, I grew up in Reading, and it seems like all these little areas that we weren't able to develop years ago, when someone else came to the commission and requested that the, you know these lots be built, um, now Reading is just, you know, we're just building on these areas. And, you know, we wonder why our houses are floating. We wonder why we don't have any frogs. And so I get emotional about this, particularly the vernal pools, which I don't know if everybody's aware, but those only exist between winter and spring. And it's an important part of nature. So thanks for listening. Okay, thanks for your input. Do you know what it, do you happen to know what types of creatures because as far as I know, the applicants have flagged that there's a vernal pool in this vicinity. So do you happen to know, have any knowledge of um, any vernal pool creatures, like any chorusing frogs, although could happen in the wetlands too. But um, do you, I don't know how familiar you are with what grows in a vernal pool. What grows in a vernal pool? Um, I am, yes. So, I mean, I'm just wondering if you've seen any um, creatures that you would, if you've seen any vernal pool creatures. Like frogs and, yes. Salamanders frogs. and. I haven't seen any salamanders. I don't know if anybody on the other side of those are or okay. a little closer. And I know there's yeah. some vernal pools around here, privately yeah. there. We've seen salamanders and little newts. Yeah. I live on the. Leah Harrington, I live on 127 Howard. And Pine Lot 5, that's the, the double driveway you know what thing, that's my driveway. Okay. And it's a dirt road. And it's a privately plowed. And as you know, um, you know, the vernal pool, it does exist for that short period of time because it, it's essentially a natural nest site. Right. So, so these creatures do exist uh, just because those creatures are there. It doesn't necessarily mean they're treating that area as a vernal pool. Um, there might be a vernal pool there. There might not. That just may, You may just be in the habitat of those creatures, not necessarily in a vernal pool. So for those who don't know. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Richard Master 9144 Howard Street. I don't know if you're aware of this, but this same proposal was brought up around 12 years ago, and it was denied. There was a lot of meetings on it. I was not aware of that. I don't yeah, know. we should have records of it because it's the same thing. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, Chuck, did you want to comment on that? Or? Uh, the only thing I would say is uh, every application stands on its own. This is a new application. We can't even use the information as far as the delineated line back 12 years ago. A delineation only lasts for three years. So, so just so you know, we yeah, people came in and told me that this was proposed before. I was wondering why it wasn't approved. If someone knew that, that would be good information. But um, well, it floods. Because it floods? Yes, it does. So, so the applicant didn't solve the flooding problem? No. Okay, well, that. <coughs> okay, hi. Um, yeah. So, as, as I said, I live on 127 Howard Street, so this whole crop, this whole development is directly in front of my house. Um, and I, when I bought the house five years ago, I was told that that land was unbuildable by the real estate company. Um, so, because it was a specific question of mine, and well, this is my dad. He's he, he can speak for me too. So, well, yeah, I had a, a couple of things. Like I said, uh, Leah and Stephen Harrington, my son and daughter-in-law, and they had a little water in their basement. And, uh, and when I reviewed, I reviewed the plans myself today. And all the water coming from Howard Street on that road, that's where you know, we'll be going into. But they got an infiltration system where they want to put in the back of Lot Four. And um, and I know they got an overflow going into the wetlands with it, and so on and so forth. And you know, and there's a lot of calculations there in reference to how much water can be absorbed fast enough to go into the ground. I understand there was some test hole done on what kind of material it was. But she does get a little bit of water in the basement. And it, and it and floods my back, the twitch floods my back, yeah. You know. And uh, lot four, like I said, it's behind lot four where that infiltration system is. I don't know what's going to be up. A, a, um, something to hold, hold water all the time, or not hold water all the time. It's going to be, uh, you know, there's different types of things that conservation do to hold water. What's the name? It's called an infiltration system. Is that going to be able to go into the ground fast enough to go away? Or will it be going into those houses? My daughter's house, or the house in front of hers, which is the furthest one back. So, and, and when they did the flags, I'm not you know, some of my knowledge is that, you know, they do organic testing. And with all the leaves that fall down, it was the organic testing done because the flags could possibly push more towards Howard Street. That would change things immensely, you know. So the so I'll just jump in with that. Um, the flagging is um, is something that's determined by um, people who are knowledgeable about identifying where the wetland is and where the wetland isn't. Um, where that wetland line is, it takes time for soils to become saturated to the point that um, the soils are significantly different and will support what's called hydric plants. So, you know, um, water-loving plants. So you need, um, you need the plant community, you need the water present, you need the soils that support the plants and are an indicator also of saturated conditions. And that's, that's what happens, that's what we go to look for when we go out to verify that wetland line. And if it hasn't been made clear yet, the wetland, the Conservation Commission tonight is not verifying or putting our seal of approval on the current existing wetland line because we have not even been out there. We haven't received approvals to get out there yet. And we have, we have, we check these lines thoroughly. Um, we go to the boundary of these lines. We start peeking over fences to see what, even though we don't go into other people's property, we only go where we have permission to go, but we do try to sort of by sight see where we suspect, based on how the plants are growing and what the ground looks like, where the wetland line might go. Because typically water being water, you might see um, wetlands occurring in a region at about the same elevation, which makes sense because water won't go like this, will it? So, you know, so we do as much visual and field investigation as we can to, to make sure that the information on the plan is as accurate as it can be. 
and that's part of the process we're going through. And then the botanist sometimes has to come out and take the samples of the material to see if the organic matter meets a certain criteria and change the line. Um, you know, there's sometimes there's dispute. It doesn't necessarily. Um, I mean, maybe you could speak to this, Carl. Carl's knowledgeable about plants. Um, you know, we have people who are knowledgeable about the soils, the plant community, um, and the hydrology. So we've got a variety of expertise on the Conservation Commission. Chuck has helped some people adjust their lines because we don't agree. It also de defend or deciding where that line is is can be depending on the the on the field conditions it can be a little bit more of an art we could argue five feet up or back um, and sometimes we do so, so yeah so um, so we'll check the line out and and if there's any dispute um, that the Commission feels that they're not satisfied with the line is then we would ask for a third party review but uh, there's two indicators there's three indicators and we just need two so plants soil or water um, two of those any two of those will work but we do look at the soils also and uh, I guess the third the third rule is or the fourth rule maybe it's in the fifth rule it all has to make sense I mean you could have everything there and it's not a wetland still so, I mean, as you can see, this, this wetland here cuts across topography lines. Doesn't make sense from, you know, my standpoint of looking at it on a plan. That's why we want to go out there and, and, and see these things. But I assure you, when, when we're satisfied with the wetland line, uh, you know, we'll go out there with the applicant and we'll, if we have to, battle back and forth. And, you know, ultimately the commission can say they don't agree as we did at 44 Roma Lane. That's yeah. been seven or eight or ten years. So. That infiltration system, uh, I'm sure the town would have to take it over. The way the stone's set up there and so on and so forth, there is some maintenance back there and getting to that location to clean that. I'm kind of wondering how they would go about doing that now. There's a number of situations like that in town. And it all it's it's an agreement between the developer and um, no. And it's not us that take that on. It's yeah. it's other departments in the town that make that promise, as, that agreement as to who's cleaning up what. They'll review the the engineers will review that, and it'll be on the memo. If if yeah. it'll be called out, I I have notes on it. We'll make sure that there's access and they're satisfied with what kind of access is out there. I'm a very cool I live at 50 Sigmas Thank you. And uh, I'd like to know what determines, what color flag determines what flag? It's, it depends on who's placing. It, it doesn't have to be a set color. Um, whoever does the delineation decides on their own, and they might have um, survey tape. Um, and they tell us before we go on the site visit which color to look for or or maybe they don't tell us and we go out and we start seeing lots of different colored tapes with yeah. lots of, because some of some of the surveys are um, old lot lines some of the surveys are yeah but this is uh, Norris environmental so they use a blue flag with a uh, aluminum tag, tag on it and that's typically what yeah. they use. Yeah, we get flags around the trees. I think that's survey. That's a survey. A survey oh, marker. Okay. Now, uh, that might be just for them to keep track yeah. of what they've surveyed. Yeah. All right. Okay. Maybe. I. But I'm. I'm affected by Mark four. And yeah. um, when it rains, and heavily, uh, the water just pours down. We have a rock wall in the back dividing the properties and the water just pours right down and further on and we have a pool of water between my house and the next house is 62 West Crop Road and in that backyard is we have the water and when years ago someone approached us about uh, giving a variance to put uh, 
something to, to connect Howard Street, you know, to us. Yeah. And we said, no, go. they said, if you could have a nice little pool in the backyard. Well, I think we didn't want to that. Yeah. We have one anyway because we gave permission or not. But it does pour and it does, we do have this pool of water. And I have a pump that works all the time. Is the <coughs> outlet on your property? Pardon me? Is the outlet, the outlet for, yeah, for the culvert that the water from the wetland comes out? It, it um, I believe so. But she too, I think, it shows up somewhere. Do you have an invert on that? I see, like, there's this 12 inch RCP on C2. Hold on, let me uh, back up a bit. You see where I'm at? That's C2A. Oh, one yeah. up. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there is an invert on this. That's that's the 12-inch RCP. I think it's 154 and a half. Yes, yeah. it's right there. Other questions? Yes, sir. So on the G shots, I want up at 66 West Rock Road, okay. uh, which is two houses down from her, and it looks like um, Lot Four has this infiltration, infiltration <coughs> basin in an emergency overflow that's just gonna dumping into our backyard. My neighbor said she's already got a lot of water there when it when it you know stops and it's storm uh, heavy rain. Uh, and then our next door neighbor has water in his and so it made its way down there and I just can't imagine all this really, really wet land and wetlands and taking out this nice thing and putting it all towards the back or towards West Rock and sloping it down and not imagine a giant This actually all goes onto the property, and then we have uh, very little that's existing that ran off to Howard Street, and then we have to look at what goes onto these properties here, and we also look at what goes to the wetland and off in that corner. Uh, and by the state's regulations, we're not allowed to increase the uh, amount of runoff from our site. So we're following the state stormwater handbook, and we've designed this to hold and infiltrate up to the 100-year storm, which is uh, about six and a half inches of rain over a 24-hour period, um, without it going over the emergency overflow. There would be some low flows that come out of this structure here, and that's what helps us get to that, not increasing the deep flows, because you maintain some storage in here and let it infiltrate when you have a little bit that comes out that would go to the weather. So I hope that is all the answer. So, so that um, storm drain, it's only like half a foot above the bottom of the basin, and you said you were six and a half inches of water. But where's, where's, the, where's the four bay? Where's the detention area in that? So this is the whole detention area, but it's not about necessarily holding um, the entire storm in that right. because some of it infiltrates and like I said we have some that does overflow through that structure but not through this emergency overflow so 
as the water comes in, you have some that goes out, some that goes into the ground, and we've done extensive calculations to uh, is sure that, that. Is that on a pitch or is that whole water flat? This bottom area is flat and it slopes slightly down to there. But all these calculations are going to be reviewed by your engineering department and we'll have to get their uh, blessing on it before we move forward with anything. You did, so you did test pits out in this area? Chuck, were these part of the test pits that you saw? There's, 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 yeah, there's, there's a, a test pit down in this corner. And I believe there are some further up in that area. Where, where did you find groundwater there? Uh, groundwater on the site was anywhere between uh, 26 or so inches and 36 inches. Or 40 inches was somewhere in that two to three foot range. So, Mike, uh, test pit five and six were 28 and 20, both 28 inches. Twenty-eight inches, so two and a half feet, a little over two feet. Um, other questions? Um, just give your oh, name, please, and address. Jason, Road, uh, so I'm assuming all these houses, when they're built, will have some pumps in in French drains. I mean, we all do around there. I mean, that water now sits and eventually goes down, but now the water will be coming up and there'll be some pumps somewhere. I'm assuming. Again, if I'm incorrect, please tell me. But will that still will be redirecting that water as well down to that zone? So, so we don't have information about whether these houses have basements. Okay. okay. Um, and all, all we see are kind of what you see, which is these giant squares. So I could uh, actually answer that. There is a regulation that the basement floors have to be a certain amount above seasonal high ground water. Right. Uh, I believe it's a foot, but, but I don't recall right off the top of my head. But we are maintaining that separation, so we wouldn't anticipate the need for uh, drains or sump pumps. It might be wise to put some drains in, but we wouldn't anticipate that they would flow any water due to the regulation of having to keep it above the groundwater table. Okay, do you understand that answer? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir? Uh, Sean Lynch, I live at 17 Milton Road and uh, been there for 33 years. Prior to that, I was at 146 West Street. I had some pumps there that pumped into the culvert to go down into the highway. So this whole area has been a problem area full time. And I think what you're hearing from everybody here is it's, it, uh, it doesn't handle water well now at all. <laughs> so to be, okay. I guess to be looking at maybe putting in homes and putting them into the buffer zone, but at least two of them, just doesn't make any sense. Um, and then just the people who question why uh, the last project, the last project ran into the same issue with the the hundred foot buffer and the twenty eight white plans. And they were going to have to put the property out in the, the front, and they were going to go to the uh, private residential development. And the the uh, density of it was not profitable for the city to do it. But that's why that was why it didn't work. But they had not planned to go on as far as the property as this project is here. This property is going way into the back of it, and well into the well into the buffer zone. And I don't see how that should be allowed. Mm -hmm. At least, especially the two the two problem zones, uh, lot three, lot four, they're in they're in the underfoot buffer zone. And like I said before, this property doesn't handle water well. It hasn't handled water well in the forty some odd years out there. And uh, you've heard from it from other people. It just we've, we've all got some pumps, French drains. It works. This is going to just make it worse for all of us. Okay. Are you going to include you. basement elevations on the, the plans? So uh, we have them on the current that's, slab. Is that's the, the slab is the other day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yes. I don't want to create a lot of redundancy. I'm Suzanne Algeria with 149 Howard Street. Okay. I just want to make a note to the developers that I was never notified of this uh, particular hearing. And so therefore, I really didn't have any time to do any preparation. I did submit those pictures. Um, there was a lot of cooling of water. Of great concern as uh, my neighbors have all shared um, about flooding and the potential for that and the wetlands that exist behind there as well as others have talked about uh, the vernal pools and, and the um, animals and such that live back there. Okay. Thank you. Just, just 
Just out of curiosity, what was your address? 129. No, it was 149. 149. Yeah, so I yeah, just want to make sure I've noted for, for future meetings. Okay. So that's yeah, we have the uh, mailings that were sent out. Yeah, that's one that I couldn't find, though. So yeah, it's not on the. I'm not saying it. Yeah. Well, here's so the. Yeah. Um, did, typically what happens is the applicant gets from the assessor's office a certified abutters list. And I have no, I'm sorry, I have no explanation as to why you were left off. So. It's the drawing on your drawing. Right here. Sorry, I'm, I'm no, sorry, you are on the list. Algeria? Algeria. 151 says sent to 149. Yeah, same name. Oh. Is there 151? It's little Karen Ann at 151. So I, I see your name, but it's it looks like it's. So, do you want me to do it? Uh, well, add, add anything that I miss. Um, so we didn't ask for an opinion on that, but I think that when I was out there for the test pits, that I was concerned about this man-made trench. This, the, what, what yeah, so, so just to clarify, that, that the jurisdictional area yeah. that, that he was referring to is associated with this man-made trench line yeah. that, that's being called out on the plan. So they identified the wetland, and when I was out there for the test pits, I was concerned about this other area, and I asked uh, the people from Norse Environmental what they thought about it, and we got the equipment over there. They took out a couple shovelfuls, you know, big buckets of uh, dirt, they dug down about two feet or so, and we disagreed. And it, at that point, I thought we were talking about getting um, a different kind of permit, a permit that would only look at the wetlands and um, not, in, you know, incorporate the houses and the building into that, so we could define where the line was. Um, but that's not mandatory. And what the applicant has done is he's given us a notice of an intent and a, an opinion from the wetland scientist that was out there that you know this commission didn't ask for, and we still intend to go out there and look at that exact spot and further up and further down just to make sure that it's not a wetland. So it's it's a piece of the application we you know to look at, but we, you know we haven't formed an opinion about it yet. So is this something that attorneys have to get involved? No, he's given an opinion as a as a wetland scientist, and it's it's just a piece of the puzzle. The way the Wetlands Protection Act is written is that this commission needs to verify the wetland line. That's that's final. If they choose, if if so, if we deny it because of the wetland line, it's not in the it's not in the right spot, and we never agree on that. They can um, they can appeal to DEP, and DEP will take over the process and 
then it will be up to them to bring the project forward if they decide to not uh, support this commission with where we thought the wetland line was. So, you know, the applicant has options, but if he wants to, um, if he wants to uh, kind of work within, you know, the framework here in this town with our bylaw, he, they have to, you know, give us a space to to look at the wetland line and to verify it and agree to it. So, at this point, we haven't looked at it yet. So only when we uh, close and approve is it finalized. Okay, and then even at that point, we can say we accept uh, flag, you know, one through twenty, but you know, twenty-one through twenty-five we disagree with. That could be a big difference. So, so. one of the most important things, and uh, Nika hit on it earlier, and as Chuck just mentioned, one of the most important things that for this project is is for the commission to go out and look at each one of these flags and understand is do we agree with the lo location of the line, and do we see any other locations that we think stand out as areas that are potentially part of the uh, protected areas that could fall under jurisdiction of the commission. So if we if we talk about next steps. He mentioned, um, I forget your name, sorry. Uh, Bill. Bill, you mentioned that you have a meeting on, I think, February 11th. So is that the planning meeting? So yeah. does it make sense to move, it does, like, if the, the Conservation Commission doesn't agree where the lines are, how, how do you move forward with the planning? Because they're, they're not going to uh, conclude their meeting or finalize this project that night either. Okay. So we're each going to take steps forward. The uh, departments will talk to each other in between meetings. We'll make sure everyone's on the same page, updating everyone um, department-wise and the commissions. And uh, it usually works out pretty well. It uh, can be the chicken or the egg there. Because yeah, yeah, if they go yeah. before planning and planning says to change something, on, right? the same thing happens to the right. conservation yeah. mission. So. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. My name is Lindsay Milton Rod. Thank um, you. So, when would you be going out to look at the property? Because obviously it's winter. You know, I, I, I had a long talk with Don Chuck yesterday. Um, so, when, when do you think of that process? It's for you. Forget plan. So, you. That's a great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. If. Um, it's sometimes it's a wait and see, mm -hmm. depending on the weather. But in the next couple of weeks, sometimes the commission, be, for the sake of the the timeline, maybe we'll we'll put a project on hold until we can definitely go out there and verify that line. I mean, that's usually so. So what you know? What so it, so at this point. You know, we can schedule something for a site visit, and then the closer we get to the date, we'll look at the ground conditions and see if it makes sense to go out or if it makes sense to wait. What we did on a similar project, you know, just to compare where it was the winter time is, you know, we owe it to the applicant to still go out and see, see what we can figure out just based on the current condition. Right. Knowing that there's, it's difficult to see, knowing that there's snow, knowing that two weeks from now when we generally have our site visits, there could be another two feet of snow. Right. Um, but we still want to at least continue that process and, and understand what do we think is missing right now? Can we see enough or is this something that has to wait? Um, so, so the steps right now would be to still try to have a visit to understand, you know, can, can we tell what's out there? And can you explain just a little bit about the buffer zones? Because um, in the beginning, I believe, um, sorry. Bill, Bill. Bill, sorry. Um, Bill was saying that things weren't in the buffer zone, but I think it depends on what we call a buffer zone. So that there's, you know, there's yeah. 25 feet, 30 feet, 30 feet. Sure. So we have the true buffer zone. Is it like like in the perfect world of a wetland? Would it would a hundred feet be the perfect buffer zone so that we would guarantee? Sure. So um, just to try to answer that. So there's a resource area, and you can think of that as the water and the wet area. And then there's a line that we try to establish where the flags go, which is sometimes not the edge of the water, but a little bit into the dry area because of soils and uh, vegetation. So somewhere just beyond the edge of the water, that's all resource area, so that's no touch zone. And then where those flags are, 
Um, 100 feet beyond that is our jurisdiction. That's called the buffer zone for a wetland. And this town has divided that buffer zone into three areas. The first 25 feet coming out from the resource area is a no-go zone, and that's called the ZNV, or the zone of natural vegetation. So nothing can happen in there. Um, the next 10 feet is a no structure zone and a protection zone for roots um, and digging and foundation walls and things like that. So no structures can go in this area, but we have allowed um, stormwater structures in that area. So, but that's delivering water right where it should be to the wetlands. So, and you know, sometimes depending on the project and depending on a mitigation we get, things can get closer. But for, you know, in purest form, it's 25 feet of no go and an additional 10 feet, making 35 feet of no structure and no go. The next 35 feet, the next 65 feet is up to the applicant to prove he can put something there and not alter or harm the resource area or those two zones that we talked about. But this project does go into the 65 feet? It does, and that's where they're allowed to live, in other words. That is their zone to prove, and everyone comes in here, every applicant comes into this town knowing that that 65 feet is, is a spot where they can propose their building as long as it's not going to alter, you know, either now or in the future, the resource area or the 25 foot ZNV or, you know, the 10 foot structure zone. So, so everything that comes before us is, is within that 100 foot zone. If it's outside of that zone, right. it, it's not part of our responsibility that will come to us. So, so the buffer zone indicates for the developer that, oh yeah, I'm in the buffer zone, I need to get a conservation permit. That's all it means. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It doesn't mean you have to do special things. It just means come into the commission and show us that you're not harming or altering. And you guys bring up flooding. That's something we have to consider. Yeah, uh, just, to, uh, just to reiterate what other people have said as well, um, it is a very uh, wet area, as we said, said we won't home from two sides of it. Um, we all do have the drains, but it's a very wet area. And there are, I believe, like this, this land is surrounded by, as I've counted, because I for all the addresses yesterday, of others that are within 300 feet of this property, and there are four homes. So it's a, it's a very condensed area. Um, so it's an awful lot of us that this project is going to impact. So I just ask you to proceed with caution, and I thank you very much for, for all your time. I think I need a lot of your time. Okay. No, thank you. We're done. Thanks, Rebecca. Last question. Well, mine's not really a question. It's a statement to offer you guys. My, I'm at 127 Howard, so we get a bus, a lot of four and five, so you're welcome to park in my driveway, the conservation. Thank you. I have two, plenty of room for people to park. And you have perfect access to walk in on that property and walk. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Does that include boats? There's a boat there. <laughs> <laughs> RVs. You have to have to. You might need to start yeah, yeah. long. It'll say a great, great show. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, is there a motion to continue? I make a motion to continue. To February 13th. To February 13th. Yep. And I'm trying to get it through, trying to see so what the site's like. It would be scheduled for the 12th. Um, is there a second? Oh, right. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Can you say the site visit is the 13th of February? It'd be the 12th. 12. At 9.30. Okay. But that the, the site visit is not for the for abutters. Public? You have to get the permission from the applicant or the, home, the landowner to be on the site visit. It's it just for the for commission. Yeah. Yeah. It is for us. So yeah. 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 Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so it'll be much later by then. Yeah, it sounds like a... Uh, it did sound like they really need to talk to engineering. No, I was feeling... Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I was feeling... So this is some of the... Hey, move it outside. Let's yep. get our next one. Okay. Can I ask you to move outside so we can get on with the next hearing, please? Thank <laughs> you.
Excuse me. Can you folks move outside so we can continue with the meeting, please? Thank you. I do. Can I throw it at you? I have one too. All right. So, Mike, you've recused yourself? Yes. Okay. No convincing from the audience. No convincing from the audience. I'll just show us that video. Okay. Chuck, we ready? Are you ready? I am. All right, so um, we're going to reopen the public hearing for the same one I had. notice of intent 270-0711, 23 to 25 Lakeview Ave and Eaton Street, map 17 and 18, lot 31, 274, 275, and 276, and 1 and 2, Fedora, Eaton Lakeview Development, LLC. It's going to be conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. The hearing will be conducted as follows. The applicant will present um, information. The commission will receive reports from its administrator and advisors. The commission will address questions to the applicant, and the public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and questions are presented. Um, for those who are arriving late, there's an attendance sheet um, at the entrance, so please sign in. Um, and at this time, um, let's introduce ourselves, starting with you, Chuck. Uh, Chuck Tironi, Conservation Administrator. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Carl Ciccone. David Panett. Bob Hayes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, Chris Sporadis from the Engineering Survey Office of Williams and Sporadis. I'm representing uh, the ownership of the property. Uh, as, um, Mr. Guy Federa and Mr. Guy uh, Manganiello, uh, who are with me here this evening, sitting here in the second row. We were last uh, before the commission back on January 9th, uh, when we gave the commission a quick update on uh, some changes uh, to the plans that we were working on uh, that came out of our first public hearing. And uh, we prepared a letter uh, and uh, revised uh, plans uh, to summarize uh, some of the items that, uh, that were up to on the plans. And I'm just going to go through that uh, January 21st uh, uh, letter uh, quickly. Uh, we touched on these at, at the last meeting. Uh, number one was uh, to provide a detail of the uh, proposed retaining wall. And uh, we were able to um, uh, show uh, the, two, uh, uh, the two options uh, for the retaining wall system. Uh, that's, uh, going to uh, be an option, if you will, between a concrete gravity block wall or a stone and cement uh, uh, wall. And a lot of the detail sheets we have. We have a few details. There will come more. Um, in fact, I'll show you uh, where we can stop. Uh, let's see. And it's probably the next one after this one. Yep. Uh, so, uh, Which the sheet is that? I beg your pardon? Sorry, I'm just trying to. It's the second to last page. page. Yeah, All second right, 16. A little oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, so item number one the commission asked us to address was to provide uh, the typical cross sections for the retaining wall system that we were going to use. And we have uh, retaining walls proposed in several locations uh, across the project. Uh, and depending on uh, construction uh, uh, cost uh, and 
uh, the availability of materials. Uh, the walls will either be a, a gravity block uh, type wall system uh, that'll be uh, laid as blocks with a, with a slight batter. Or uh, if you look down here, we have a cross section for a stone and cement wall, which is a, a similar type um, uh, wall, but using uh, actual uh, stones and uh, cement uh, to cement the joints together. Uh, uh, Chuck, is there a way to just uh, uh, just zoom out just a little bit so you can see that. Yeah, here's the, the stone and cement wall detail. Uh, number two was to provide a new plan uh, showing the snow storage areas. And so our two landscaping plans, we talked a little bit about this last time, uh, we eliminated the snow storage areas in those areas where the land sloped away from the parking lot. And so we're only proposing snow storage on areas that if the snow uh, were to melt, and when it melts, it flows into the parking lot and through the stormwater system to be treated before uh, before going um, and discharging to uh, nearby uh, wetland resource areas. Item number three, which was uh, the most challenging for us because it was uh, a bit labor intensive, is that we did a, a tree inventory uh, for uh, for all trees uh, within the buffer zone, uh, six inches or greater in diameter or crest height. And uh, survey crews from our office located um, uh, all these trees in the zone. We located a total of, um, of 190 trees, and we uh, we located them and showed them on our both our existing conditions plan uh, and the landscape plan to show uh, just how many trees we're going to uh, uh, are proposed to be taken and how many trees uh, existing trees are are to remain. Uh, we provided a summary in, in our letter based on our proposed development and grading plan. Uh, there are a total of 86 trees that are proposed to be taken uh, out of the 190 trees that we located within uh, the range of the wetland and 100 feet away from the wetland. Our proposed uh, to offset the taking of the trees, our landscaping plan uh, proposes a pretty extensive planting plan, which I've uh, described in the past. Uh, specifically, we are proposing uh, uh, 27, 27 native deciduous trees, approximately three inches in caliper, uh, 16 arbor body plantings, uh, 79 flowering shrubs, and 186 uh, plantings uh, that consists of a combination of grasses, perennials, and ground covers. Uh, and that's, that's the uh, summary of uh, the table, if you will, that is our planting list for the project. Item number four uh, was to add the street sweeping uh, to the operating maintenance plan, uh, which, which we did. We talked about that uh, a little bit uh, the first hearing and the last hearing. That's been added to the operation and maintenance plan. Uh, number five was to show the drip line of the tree on the northwest side of Lot A. This is the tree that, um, that's right along the property line between number 114. Eaton Street, which is uh, the house that was recently um, mm -hmm. that was recently sold. There are two trees uh, along the property line there, and um, <coughs> that one tree in particular that we located the um, drip edge on uh, was identified on the plan uh, with a note. I'm only guessing. Do you know which she? Yeah, sure. So Chuck, we can stop right there, and if we zoom in, um, you can see that. Um, it's uh, we right showed, on the property line. That's right. It's right literally on the property line, uh, which we knew uh, going in. So that means that it's owned by uh, uh, the Federa family and uh, the folks at the one, uh, 114. And uh, it's a, a catalpa tree. It's the tree with the, those long beans that hang from the, the things that we used to have one of those growing up. We used to throw them at each other. <laughs> they hurt, by the way. Um, so that's that tree there. We showed the drip edge, and, uh, and that's what it looks like. And it, we may have to trim um, a little bit of the hanging branches on, on this side, but the tree is, is technically slightly outside the buffer zone. Yeah, there's a good plan that shows the Abravite and uh, the access. Sure, let's do that. Uh, that's the landscaping plan. Uh, so the landscaping plan is a little bit later in the plan set. And uh, if this does it through, I'll stop you. And right here, uh, one more sheet to, to get over to uh, that lot. Uh, so this is what we're proposing. Uh, the 16 arbor body plantings that I mentioned. Uh, and you'll notice a gap here. Uh, that's to make room for that existing uh, catalpa tree uh, at this location here. 
you can see how um, the drip edge um, slightly overhangs uh, the driveway and obviously overhangs uh, the private property next door. Item number six was to identify an area of leaf litter uh, that we identified during our site walk. And you'll notice that on the plan, uh, this is uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the rear, towards the rear of the existing property, uh, existing home that's on Eaton. It actually shows in this view. This is uh, this uh, sort of amorphous uh, shape here. And we identified it as an area of leaf litter um, that was removed. Uh, when we went out there to locate it, um, it had already been removed, but you could tell where it was, uh, so we located uh, we located that anyway and showed it on the plan. Okay. A couple of additional items was uh, the deck lights on the rear of buildings 9, 10, and 11, and units 9, 10, and 11, and 12 here. We added that uh, uh, that wall light uh, detail to the um, to the plan. Uh, this is the photometric analysis plan here uh, with the uh, specifications of the light. Uh, if you recall, uh, the, the watt equivalent is, uh, is a 20 watt lamp uh, at the decks of each of these locations. And this particular light was selected because it's a non-glare uh, style. And, um, and we included it in the table uh, with a note um, specifically calling out these units um, and that these units are to receive that light on our decks. The flood plain of volume calculation summary sheets, uh, the sheet was revised to change the wording uh, from fill to cut to clarify uh, for the reader those sections that are being cut. Uh, just as a, as a side note, uh, we actually um, also added the butter information uh, for the properties that are directly adjacent to the property to make it easier to see who our, who our neighbors are uh, right next door. That was added to the uh, first sheet of the plan set. And uh, we finally, uh, my, my final additional item note was that the plans now show existing trees to be saved. Uh, and this is most easily read on the proposed landscaping plans. So not to clutter up the plan too much, each of the existing trees are shown with these black dots. Uh, the size and, the, and whether or not it's a conifer or a deciduous tree are kind of memorialized by a note on each of the, on each of the uh, dots, if you will. Uh, and you can follow that um, all the way around the site. So then you can see uh, that beyond the limit of work, um, there, there are actually quite a few trees. Uh, that, was, um, that was the end of my uh, summary of the plan changes. And so uh, we're back here uh, this evening to see if there's any, uh, if there are any other questions or concerns. So we're, uh, we're all here to, um, uh, to answer any more questions. I had a question. Um, so the berm, and when the berm's taken down to some elevation, do we lose any trees? Are those trees uh, along this edge here? Yeah. So well? any tree that you see mm -hmm. on the landscaping plan um, is to remain. Okay. Uh, we did lose some that are inside the site. Yeah. If you were to go back to the existing conditions plan, we, we specifically called out all those trees. And they're actually, they actually show in the grading plan as well with an X on them to show, uh, to show the reader you know, why, the, why that tree has to be taken. It's clear that it's, it's within the limit of work. But there are a lot of trees along um, on the canal here that, are, um, that do not have to be taken. And, and if there were those open areas, you agreed to discuss them. We're going to do something with these open areas. Yeah, what we did on the plans, and uh, I noticed that you can't really read the notes on the screen there. On the landscape plan, we did add a note. Uh, one of the notes reads um, that if there are any areas that are, that once, the, uh, once we get in there, we cut down the brum, and we do our cleaning, and we, we take a close look at areas that have maybe uh, eroded, um, especially along the banks of the canal, uh, that we uh, agree to, uh, to work uh, with the commission and your agent to uh, select the conservation seed mix to help stabilize any eroding areas. Um, and then it's really up to the commission uh, as to how they let the handle you know, additional plantings above and beyond um, the uh, the ones that we're proposing on the on our landscaping plan. Uh, that's something that um, you'll have to memorialize with some words and in order of conditions. Uh, we haven't we haven't exactly proposed something specific. We just don't want it to be you know, open ended, and uh, you know, because trees you know it cost it does cost a lot of money to fill in every gap. Let's say. Right. And one example that I'll I'll tell you if we were to look at an aerial. This, this is not color, uh, but 
we have a couple of different wetland types of wetland resources out here. This actually does show it pretty good. Behind um, Eaton Street, uh, you'll notice once you get in the back here, there really aren't a lot of trees in the existing condition. Uh, one of the reasons is that this is a this is a, a pretty vast uh, floodplain. You can see this this sort of area here, and this is a this is an area that really doesn't have any trees. It's a different type of you know uh, resource area, like an open meadow, let's say, as opposed to uh, the more heavily tree areas which exist you know right along uh, right along here. Uh, so uh, you'll see that there are some open areas where there are no trees in the existing condition, but I think that that also has to do with the type of wetland resource that we that we border. Okay. Uh, my only other question while we're on this plan is I was just going to ask you about snow storage areas. Or is this a good plan? So it is. This is where uh, this is where the snow st storage areas are, are shown. And um, you know, this area down here that we were talking about, you didn't know how that was going to be configured with the staging area for moving in. That's right. You can see how uh, we've uh, we've uh, we've allowed for a cutout here that uh, that's big enough uh, to. Uh, hold a, a loading space the way it's defined in the zone bylaws, so 12 feet wide by 35 feet long, and, uh, and we configured it so that uh, that space uh, does not interfere with the 24 foot wide aisle. Uh, in order to do that, we had to slide the dumpsters over, and so there really there's no room for snow storage here anymore. Okay. We're but where is it on? Uh, sure. So uh, on this lot, it's it's rather limited. Okay, um, but uh, we have our islands here that don't have any large plantings uh, here and here, and then across the front of the property, we do have the ability to uh, you know to pile snow in between um, okay. some of our trees out here. So nothing along the immediate area where we're up against the. Uh, <coughs> so that's great. Right. Can I ask? Can I ask a question about um, landscaping plan sheet eleven? Sure. Um, That's uh, on the Eaton Street side. One more down. That's it. Yep. Um, I mean, right there. So, on this landscaping plan, what I'm hoping to get a sense of is where the extent of grass. Can, like, can you sort of sketch out, you know, between those buildings and the 25-foot line, where the extent of grass, in where the, the limit of grass. In the existing condition? Or after? Uh, finished. So, uh, so finished, it would be um, along our, our limit of work, which is very close uh, to the 25-foot zone of natural vegetation. Beyond that, we're not proposing to maintain that area as grass. And so, you know, if we do nothing, um, you know, that would just go back to go back to natural, if you will. Okay. But, but in front of the 25-foot uh, zone is going to be maintained. That's cor that's so correct. That's weak mowing and all that. Yeah, especially in the area. This is the area where our volume compensation area is. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a, that's an intended to be maintained as long, so that okay. we can control that. Uh, but then it, as soon as you get over to the other side of, of uh, the building that has units 9, 10, 11, and 12, we hit our you know, retaining Retain wall. wall. Yeah. So, Probably not going to take that much out there. Yeah, yeah. there is. Okay. Similarly, over here, there's a section of retaining wall. This is a little bit of grass here in between this retaining wall and that retaining wall, but that's about it. Okay. Um, thank you for your extensive tree inventory. I appreciate it. Um, and it looks like, so I'm just kind of doing the adding up of that. So it's 86 trees um, removed, 27 trees replaced. Um, so 27 deciduous and 16 arbor vita gives us 43 trees. So you got 43 trees 79 plus 79 shrubs. Shrubs. That's shrubs. Um, and some of our, I think some of our kind of conceptual replacement ratios were, if it's a small flowering shrub, um, it's a ratio of three shrubs for every tree. If it's a larger flowering shrub, like a five or six foot mature size, it's a two to one replacement concept. So what I'm getting, if I'm assuming two to one, um, 43 trees and then 
because of the shrubs, 40, I'll round up, you know, 40 additional trees for 83, which are a couple shy of the 86. And I guess I just want to throw that out there to the Conservation Commission members. You know, they're also proposing to plant 186 grasses, perennials, and ground covers. I, I didn't do the math, but how many how many trees do you think we're missing? The shrubs? Well, we, it's not specified what type of shrub. So they, they are specified. Okay, on the sorry. On the planting plan. Uh, so it would be on the first of the two uh, landscaping sheets. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, got it. Okay. Ornamental trees. All right. I believe they're, they're sort of categorized in, uh, in groups. Okay. From G10. Uh, summer sweet, compacting berry. I'm trying to pick uh, native, um, native shrubs. Uh, well, all the all the tree, uh, tree and shrubs are, are native. Yep, yep. So just um, just to look at that. Carl, these shrubs, they're mature. And the planting size is one thing, but the mature I think size. The, yeah, the Nico, I think, would get a pretty decent size. And the plethora will probably be around that medium size. You know, a, a nice, a nice shrub. The, you know, my the upper buddies will obviously mature into something, hopefully, ten to twelve plus feet. I just wonder. I was just wondering what the, the install size is four to five height, which is. Well, I don't know, it's kind of non common but anyway, I, I think, and I think the grasses, the ground covers, grasses and perennials, I think are even more typically can withstand the conditions, the, you know, not being maintained with, say, irrigation, et cetera. So I think those are good. But we're not hard, counting the grasses, are we? So what? Are we counting those grasses as part well, of the Well, that's what I think is trying to... Well, I'm trying to, I'm I just... Thinking is that we are proposing 180... Grasses. Right. Right. So. Um, you know, usually we, we count things that are a little bit more woody. Um, so I think I think we're close or pretty much there, but I think we just need to make that judgment call. Yeah, I think it's close. I think if we, going back to the area that may not get enough shading when we take down the berm, if they're willing to work with us, and we can we can call out some areas that we wanted planted. I think that would that would mm -hmm. take care of it. I'm when I'm going out there looking for it. Yeah. But if there was a shaded area that's right, you know, presently shaded and now it's not. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people out there talking to it, and we come to the conclusion, that, you know, a shrub works or a tree works. Then, then I'm hoping that that you know that everyone agrees that yeah, let's plant one or two or something like that. And when we're close on the numbers, yeah, you know, I think it, you know it's a, maybe a you know a few a few planting shy of you know meaning sort of the intent of the yeah of the tree replacement policy. Yeah, if you want to take them out of the you know interior area, that's fine. Plant them over by that stream. We're good with that. I uh, don't say that to Gene. I know that. I know that. Sorry, Gene. Don't listen. But, uh, <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh, but, yeah, I, mean, uh, I think as long as it's something reasonable, um, it's a balancing act, right? We want the site, the project to look nice, but we also want to make sure we have a nice buffer between our project and the wildlife resources. I think so. And, and the shading is very important. We wouldn't want to see that. You know, we, we know it's at the last meeting, but we wouldn't want to see just berm and bank and grass. It's very different than what it was. So, so we can just... You know, have that understanding, and it will be written into the order of conditions that if there is a tree, and sometimes we do like a, what's it called, a tree bank. So we ask for you know some trees. It sounds like that's why I was asking what the number for. You said it looks yeah. like there's a few shy. I was wondering what that number was, and but um, it, I mean three. Yeah. 
<laughs> so when I did it, it came out to two. But, you, but, you, but you're saying that you think it's three shy, but then you're not giving any credence to the ground cover acids, sedges, and perennials. We don't exactly. Use leaf yeah, exactly. Which, which we don't usually for tree replacement. <laughs> yeah, for the, it's not on the policy. I'm not, I'm not saying it's the not the amount that's there, I think we should give. But it's not on give. the policy. But it's it doesn't, not. Doesn't it's we not don't part of the take into consideration grasses in our tree policy? It only has shrubs and trees. So, so. Um, I just want to ask. So, the limit the limit of grass is there going to be grass on the down slope side? of this wall, sort of the boundary. Because you said... What sheet are you on? Yeah, so, I'm so sorry, I'm on sheet um, 10. So I just sort of want to understand when I'm standing, walking this line, when it's finished, am I going to look toward the wetland and see little patches of grass and then trees and shrubs, or am I going to see, what am I going to see? Right, so the short answer is that um, the walls, wherever you see walls, very, very close to the limit of work. And so okay. that's going to be the, the erosion control line. And then from that point uphill, uh, we're going to be on you know this side of the erosion control line, scraping down you know that topsoil layer right at the silt fence line. And that's where the wall you know is constructed. So there'll be very little need to have any any grass, um, and if something needed to be planted because something was disturbed, let's say, um, on the downhill side of the wall, I think a, a more appropriate would be a, a, some kind of a conservation mix. Uh, even if we did nothing, um, it's going to be such a small. It's going to be such a small area that um, we don't intend on planting any grasses on the okay. downhill side of the retaining wall. So you're just going to leave the outside of the wall untouched, mostly. That's correct. Okay, I just wanted to get a sense of that. Sure. I wasn't here last meeting, but did we review? You had questions about the retaining wall <coughs> at the catalpa tree. Yeah, we. So did you? Cause we so we discussed that and um, did you? Let's go. Yeah, because that wall. So I have one question was: Are the, are there three wall details? Are they key into the plan, or are those just options for right now? So they'll be they'll be op their options. It'll be one of those one of those three. One of them. So throughout every wall graphic, there's going to be one detail, or could there be multiple details for? Yes. For instance, along that. So because that faces. Yeah. That, that you're going to be able right. to see that. Yeah. Uh, more than likely, that's that's probably going to be a stone and cement wall. Uh, right. Because we want it to look nice. Um, so the know, typical, the geo grid, the, the nature of that would be less base and less prep, which would be, I mean, obviously, you're raising, you're putting earth on top of the root system anyway. I'm just talking about that tree. Oh, I see what you're saying. But, you know, the geo, the geo grid detail would be a little bit less base, a little bit, a little bit less, you know, sort of work to begin with. But. Yeah, I, instead of those other walls, those yeah, I mean, would be it, tied back just, into you know, the bank. If you think in particular, again, it, it's sort of a, a little bit of a point because everything to the right of the tree is being raised so that the, the roots are going to be covered anyway. But, you know, if you're talking eight foot wall max and two thirds of that is the prep, you could have a three to six foot base, you know, underneath that. If you're digging down six to ten inches at least. So. So my, my question was, now that you see where the drip line is and you understand that there's, they're going to put soil on top of it, but there's a lot that you know, maybe the other half of the tree doesn't have that. Yeah. Is that tree going to survive? I mean, I, I, mean I, would, I would think that there's a good chance it will, but obviously, I don't know. The, I don't know. The, I mean, it's, it's saying 40% saying rip say is covered by roots. I mean, covered by earth. So might be more. Could it's, be more. It's probably more like thirty. Yeah. Less than thirty percent. Because it yeah, it's, it's a little bit. It's you have an eight foot buffer there, right, or something. Like section that. here, right, and then, yeah. and then from here so, to here, there's no fill. Yeah. I mean, it, it'll be initial, <laughs> initial shock, but roots are deep enough. Yeah, we'll we'll find out. Um, <clears throat> You don't have to disturb the roots to kind of prep for that uh, entrance, do you? I mean, you won't be cutting below grade to start building above it. So we'll be uh, we'll be stripping the topsoil uh, throughout the limit of work. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the initial disturbance, and then uh, and then from there it'll either be a cut or a fill. And I know 
in this area it's a slight fill because we're taking the curse off of how steep the land drops off. Yeah. If you remember this driveway drops off pretty quick. Yes. And so we're 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 taking the curse off that a little bit by, by filling a little bit and extending the slope. There, this is towards the end of our fill though, so there there really won't be a lot of fill by the time you get down here, but but yes, there's there's fill along here. So any any surface root, I mean at that point that tree I guess my point is, right, so if you look at the fieldstone wall detail, you could be, depending on the height of that wall, have a two foot plus wide base prep plus six to ten inches. Six inches is typical, but it's low. So you're talking, say, six to ten, but the geogrid wall is a much less intrusive. It was my point. And like you said, you're not going to see the fieldstone wall from that side, anyways. So you're, you you would prefer to see the smaller block wall. The only limit, the only the only uh, the only potential you know prohibitive part of that is if we have. Uh, let me see if the utilities look like coming through here. And that's what would make the wall, the gravity, that base is still pretty big, right? So that's right. I, I don't. Gravity's not going to be an option. Not the gravity block. I don't think. It's going okay. To be. It'll either it'll either be the stone or the yeah. But most likely the first lock is what we're going to. Yeah. Have. It's nice. Yeah. I mean, that was just, I was just commenting per the conversation of the tree. So, is, is the, the tree actually wholly on the Federa property? It's uh, literally on the property line. So when a tree grows, the person who owns the tree is the person whose property it grows out of. And so um, it's, uh, it's, it's mutually owned, like equally owned by both property owners. So if somebody does something to damage it, you know, the other party, you know, um, can have a claim of damages against the other property owner. So you can't cut down the branches on your half of the tree? You can. Um, so the way that works is that, um, and, and even if a tree was growing on someone else's property, the, uh, the, the protocol is you contact that property owner and say, hey, my branches are overhanging on my property. Would you, would you, would you like to cut them back? I'd like to come onto my property to do that. But they don't do it after a certain period of time. So you can take them down. Take them down. Right. But if the tree dies, you're responsible. Has there, has there been any, has there been any contact with the abutter to, to question about taking the tree out? So we have, uh, we did reach out and have, uh, in, during the early part of our project, we had our neighborhood outreach. It was a Saturday morning that we met with that property owner about what the retaining wall was going to look like. Did they want you know, the retaining wall on the property line? Did they want the retaining wall set back a little bit with plantings in front of it? And that, that was their preference, was to have the retaining wall set back a little bit and look at green. Um, you know, uh, but I understand the property is recently sold. So oh, have you been in contact with the new owner? It, it hasn't closed yet. It hasn't closed yet. I mean, that's obviously another option as well, which may not impinge upon what method you use for the wall. Right, so we're open to, uh, I, I, it was our understanding that maybe it was uh, the wishes of the commission to save it if we could. Um, oh, God. I don't, I don't know of anyone in this room that has ever had to clean up from a catalpa tree that would want to save one of those. <laughs> They're dirty. Well, you, you, yeah, so right now we're having it saved, but if you get, you know, favorable uh, comments from the new owner, you could just bring them to the commission, but that could be used in the tree bank thing I was talking about, you know. Yes, they have oil come down on beans and 
I mean, I know that. That'll give you more accounts. I think it'll be two leaves. That makes sense. Oh. 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 That makes sense. But I want to use. If you cut that tree down, I want to use a Marcus Brook. Um, <laughs> with you know, with taking off the topsoil, cutting into the roots, and removing those, then just burying more than forty percent of the tree. You know, I think that we're not actually talking about a tree that's going to survive too long. Anyways. So no, hopefully <coughs> that owner no. understands. White I mean, maybe we can have him call us. A large and yeah, yeah, because if we tell him that uh, you know, this, this is going to happen, and he should probably. <coughs> no, I don't think. I mean, I, you guys would even plant right. another tree in his property if he asked you to, you know, to replace it. It's, it's, it's a Ford. So. It's cheaper. It's a lazy yeah. option. So I'm sure we'll be reaching out to him at some point. See, see what happens. The first, the first but, that hasn't. That's what we're set with what we have here for now for tonight. Any more questions from conservation members? No? Question. Oh. Yes. Uh, before you open Go up, ahead. I just wanted to, just one point of clarification when you uh, when you reopened up the public hearing tonight. Uh, you mentioned that uh, we had applied um, under the the state wellness protection act and regulations and the bylaw, but we haven't filed under the bylaw. Right. Only I just wanted to clarify that. We've Thanks. Only, we've only Thanks for reminding me. Under the under the act and the regulations. I was in script mode. No, I know. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Um, questions from the public? So, go ahead. Hi, my name's Diana. I'm in Toronto with Tree Smith Avenue. So I know you've been fine with the tree thing, but I'm not, um, because 86 trees is a lot of trees, and I walk by that property a lot, and I think it's a developer's dream because it's actually fairly cleared already. Both sites are cleared in the middle. So the trees, what you didn't show was the trees that you're taking down. So like, when I walk there, there's, you know, you've got your landfill now all along. If you show me the border between you and Lakeview, it's that square part that's um, where, it's the border where your property goes. Do you know where I'm talking about where it goes um, with the Lakeview apart the apartment complex? Yeah, so all there. around that apartment complex. Okay. So this is a street, so it, all along here, these yes. are all, I'm assuming, part of that 190 tree inventory you did, which is great, and I thank you, because I lost count. So, so you go along here, and then along the back. That currently, right now, is all tree-lined. You've got, like, they've already pushed landfill against the, you know, you can see where the hill is against the border. But, but it, in your thing, in your, your, your spiel, which was great, but you didn't show, so how many, you show how many trees are staying in, but you didn't, I need to know which one, how many you're taking out over here, how many you take out over here, because those are trees that actually, I'm not, I don't get how they impinge on your building site. And then the same thing, I want to make sure that on the other site, even though I know you say like it's not at all a meadow, it's a wetland, so I, you know, let's be clear. But but in the other site, along the back, that's all tree lined, and and again, that doesn't impinge on the building site, as far as I can tell, unless you're going further back than I think you're going. I mean, the main trees I can see that you would have to take out, which you know, are dear to my heart, are the bigger ones, which I believe are the big films. Um, I believe they're not. Right on the corner, right on the corner of the property, like right when you, right at the big curve, um, right over here. All the trees that are taken are identified with the next. Okay, so you are you taking out the large? So um, so on uh, so this plan this plan here shows um, everywhere where you see an X like, um, through a tree, you have a development uh, a tree that uh, is going to have to take. And, um, you can see them here. It's easier to see, obviously, okay. over, you know, over here. But anywhere, everywhere you see an X, are the trees that are supposed to take. Okay, so, 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 okay, so, well, that's what I guess I'm asking. So, all these trees along here and along the back, how are they, I guess I don't understand the rationale, because large trees, even though it's not just the aesthetic, we were talking drainage last time, so I want to, 
why would we be removing? That's so what, why would that's, you that's, be that's removing? That's what them, uh, Madam Chair, is it okay to answer the question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so those are trees that are within the parking lot, uh, an area that's going to be filled, you know, quite significantly. Um, so that's the reason why the, uh, those trees are. But, but I walk, I'm just telling you, when I go there, those trees, even if you have a parking lot, those are literally almost at the border along the line. So it's a nice buffer between you and the people on the next development. So like, even if you're, like, I guess I'm not understanding, is your parking lot literally coming right up to the fence? So um, so when you say the other development, do you mean the Lakeview apartment yes. development? So that would be over to your left there. Um, that, this is the Lakeview, um, Lakeview apartment project. Okay, here. so I'll and see you've got X, 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 X. That's right, uh, but there are also uh, other, other other trees are shown that are not coming down. Um, you can see the ones that are coming down as well. Uh, oh. But this what I'm. But my question to you is: so why I, you're asking me by the ones that are not? I'm just asking you why. Why would you be taking these down? Only because we have a great uh, a great difference between uh, the two properties, and uh, and if we're filling or cutting, you know, adjacent to uh, to a tree, then. That, that's a tree that would have to be removed in order to accomplish the grading program. Okay. All right. Okay. The other thing I just wanted to point out is um, I love the non glare lights in the back. Um, and having fought the long and hard for Home Depot to turn down their lights, so I would say if you're doing that in the in the park that's the closest, why not do that for for the next row as well? have the non-glare lights because who wants to do you know what i mean like be consistent and have it for the whole thing i mean we don't need more light pollution there's plenty of lights from home you know from the different complex so you actually have the ability to limit it when you're putting them in so that was my other request was with that and then the final thing i wanted to say about snow removal is i this is when I walk by the Lakeview Apartments, which they have a wrought iron fence in the back, well, they just dump the snow over on the other side of the fence. That's what they do. Nobody polices them. So my sense is, if there's no monitoring of snow removal, if I were having to clean up the snow and you have to pay to haul it out, what are you going to do? You're going to push it into the wetlands. You'll find a way to get it over whatever you have. So I guess I'm just putting in a thing for having some stipulation about monitoring and oversight. Is that possible? So the, uh, I guess... Chuck, do you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah, that's a separate violation to dump snow into the wetlands. Yeah, so the outside of this project, no matter what, how it ends up, we could go back to this complex and fine them for doing that. Okay. Uh, we'll also have it in this order of conditions. Lakeview, we don't have an order of conditions for them, and it's probably not written in whatever agreement that the planning came up with, but uh, it's still a violation. Okay. And we investigate those all the time. Yeah, so if, so, if you oh, see okay. something like that, you should... It would be great if you gave Constellation a call and maybe you could okay. take a picture of it with your phone sure. or something like that. Sure. Okay. So we would get right on that. All right, and so your thing about the shade, I, I wanted to just ask you that. So where there is tree taken out and there is exposed and exposed area, you're, you're going to require that um, that be filled in? Is that, are you going to require that or how is that going to work? A shade you had mentioned. We can't. Something. We can't. Uh, you can't change the habitat. I mean, I think that that's not. I mean, that's under our bylaw, but it's under the Wetlands Protection Act. So if if so, we're just going to have something in the order of conditions that says that you know we're going to work with the developer in this area to make sure that there's no uh, increased sunlight on. <coughs> Brook will review that with the commission and the developer before signing it so everyone will agree but the point is that you can't have something even though those trees are in the parking lot they have to be removed if that's all the trees there are and now on this side of the stream there's no trees that's going to be a problem so yeah that's they're going to end up having to plant something over there and but 
one reason why they may not plan something is <clears throat> it has to be looked at. I, I, I mean, I can't visualize what that's going to look like at this point. How much room is going to be left? Is it enough room to plant a tree? And the right tree can go in there. Then, then that's what's going to happen. My intention is that we're not going to increase the sunlight on that. And that's true. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Yes. <coughs> uh, we have several. Uh, the first question I have is. Oh, Scott, question, sir. Thank you. First question is uh, taking out all these trees. What is the average height of the trees taken out? And what is the average height of the shrubs and the plants that's going in? We don't have that data. We don't ask for that data. What we ask for is we ask for the diameter of the tree at chest height because that's an indication of the amount of growth the tree has had. Um, and we do not ask for replacement in kind because that's not necessarily feasible. Um, so what we do ask for is we do ask for well-developed saplings, I mean well-developed saplings, three inch um, diameter or better. Five to six feet tall five to six foot tall trees so we're not we're not having them plant like little tiny sprouts they're putting in some some trees that are substantial and should be able to take hold so and it's conceivable that the development would take out a 50 foot tree and put in a five foot tree that's yes. been yeah. the practice yes that's been the practice and that's been the policy for people's personal backyards as well when people have a tree that it because of a storm has lost a huge limb and they think it's going to come crack the next storm is going to take another limb and destroy their car um you know we allow them to take the big old growth um, after they've gone through a permit and a review process and replace that yeah so it, it is a tree replacement policy it's not a habitat replacement policy and that's the difference we're just replacing one tree for one tree other towns do it differently but it took us uh, i don't know eight eight months almost a year to get that first mike is laughing me back there um that first step that uh, our first attempt at this tree policy and and it's worked remarkably well but you know sometimes it really highlights the fact that we're not replacing habitat well this could i mean it sounds like there's a potential even that this could significantly change the landscape uh, not having an artist rendition uh, looking at these plans to me it's hard to get a conceptual uh, conceptual design or conceptual view of what's really going on i'm also going to say that it's a significant nuisance there has been for a long time uh, there was a lack of town oversight when the jordan when the jordan's project was built um, it is a, a known fact that the facade the lights on the facade of jordan's is uh, not in compliance with state law. That way he's backed up on top of the top of that. He's a light consultant. Uh, due to the fact that uh, we have a significant development with significant lights, um, I would like to see um, in future meetings, and I think it's incumbent upon the town to have the developer hire a lighting consultant to see what kind of uh, a deleterious impact you're going to have with the deletion taking out all these trees. I think it's going to be a very, very big use issue. Bigger than, than what you think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that that's going to happen. I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you on that. They did submit a lighting, a photometric plan that attempts to predict what the impacts of the lighting will, will be. Um, and we have looked at that and we've asked for a couple of adjustments based on that. And so we've got those concerns in mind as well. Right, but these are highly esoteric technical issues. I mean, to me, when you are getting into a land plan, it's not, not too many people who are experts in lighting and it affects on the surrounding community. So I would ask the town, but I mean, I would, I would think that that in and of itself should be pure food paid by the developer. That really is not within the purview of the Conservation Commission, though, to, to do the light. 
that's not that's not what we uh, are here uh, to decide upon. So that would not be under our purview. Who's, who's purview? That would be well, the, say in planning and zoning and etc. But that's not for us to decide. Well, lights are something that we can we can talk about because of. Um, it's so a lot of uh, a lot of animals get their signals to uh, fly north or mate or wake up by the moonlight and if they think the moon light is all night long every day of the week every day of the month and then that's the problem that's what we're trying to prevent but wholesale lighting on a complex and this is what Dave's talking about is really not our thing it's 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 planning and then we're going to adjust it like we did on these these porches in the back so um <coughs> Okay, any other questions? Mike? I just like to Green Street. Um, I, just, I appreciate that they put together an inventory and have indicated to you since what the replacement would be. I just want to make sure we point out the commission. I, I would encourage this bank of tree replacement to be on the high side. I understand this is a 40B and they don't necessarily have a, a, a need to meet the policy, but we generally, the, the commission generally wouldn't include trees outside the one foot buffer as part of that inventory. And I think many, if not half of these, are actually outside of the one foot buffer. So we're, we're taking down a lot of trees within the one foot buffer and bringing them outside. I just want to make sure that's part of the consideration we're talking about. Is <coughs> that Chuck talks about of trees that could be replaced and what could go along, you know, particularly the south side there, the areas along the way. Right, and I think, um, and I think as Chuck said, um, that's going to be um, a big part of as the project goes, seeing how that works out and finding ways to fill in the tree gaps. So on this side here on, that I have on the plan, this is the, I don't know, I've, I've dialed it in a lot. Um, but here's the apartments, Lakeview apartments. Here's that trash area we're talking about. And Walkersbrook comes down this area and then runs around this corner here. So out to this point, I counted 26 trees in this area and there's 11 there now so that's that's what we're losing we're losing more than half the trees that used to shade that area and so it is going to be significant um it's not so bad in, in these areas here because there's more space but i mean that's something we're going to have to talk about when we discuss you know the order of conditions mm -hmm. and yeah. what we're going to do so yeah. um but that's why we asked for the survey in the first place and the and the re their replacement plan yeah. and what that looks like so that we can get de back down to the detail of what's needed where so. yeah so but that side looks like it's going to be you know exactly as uh as uh discussed just recently, uh, it's it's going to look significantly different. Um, and it's not going to have many trees. As a matter of fact, I don't even know what those trees are. They might all be Catalpa trees. So, no. any other questions? Yep. So I have a question about oversight. So we're talking about all these details now, yeah. like 186 plantings, uh, 79 shrubs. So who is going to actually follow up if that happens? I mean, I think the development thing has been very professional so far, but is there oversight really? Who will see if there are 79 shrubs or what size they are? How does it work? Yeah, so on big projects like this, we typically ask for an environmental monitor to uh, work with the uh, developer in those areas that are in the buffer zone. So any work that goes on in those areas, so it would be the trees, it would be the plantings, the grading, anything like that. But the plantings are outside of the buffer zone? That's 
that's well that's not our jurisdiction so we can't have any say over that no, no, but they're saying like 79 shrubs and the shrubs can be anywhere so anybody counts them I, i'm just trying to understand the process so i know they said all that but since they're they're um since we're not under the town's bylaw the wellness protection bylaw outside the 100 foot buffer zone even if we count to them and said they're 79 we can't do anything about it in this in this uh so, so, uh, so in the order of conditions that you guys are going to write and there's lots of detail will be in it so how closely is that being followed and i'm just kind of keeping in mind what happened uh, with the uh, they could trust but they moved the building, so it seems like there's not much kind of really oversight what's going on, so uh, it's, it's going to be different. I, I missed all of that. Something about a building and no yeah, oversight? I'm just wondering. So the railway station, like it seems the town didn't really call very well the one that was being the 42 project. And I'm just wondering, are things going to be done a bit differently here now? Is there such a desire from town staff? I guess my question is more to town staff. Is there like, because lots of projects happening simultaneously, I, I don't know how many consider the conservation commission, but. So the you know conservation commission is very careful, and on big projects we take an extra step by requiring the hiring of environmental monitor. Um, most likely it will be someone from um, Williams and Sparagis, but they will be there to report back to us with either monthly or weekly uh, reports that uh, make sure that they're following the order conditions and everything that we've asked for is happening and calling us out to the site um, when we're supposed to be there. On top of that, I myself, I continue to go out there um, as I see fit based on the schedule that I asked for, um, uh, you know, their, their schedule of how the project progresses. But this is a big project and there's a lot of eyeballs on it. And I hope that there are no mistakes because no one wants that to, no one wakes up in the morning and says, you know what, I want to spill coffee on myself today. It's just the greatest thing in the world. So I'm sure that this is, that would never, uh, I can't say never, but I'm going to say for myself that we're, we're not going to have any mistakes in conservation that um, I, I don't think that we've at least talked about amongst ourselves. I mean, the public might see them as something that they didn't understand and why did this happen? Uh, but there could have been a meeting to allow it an additional tree to come down. And the, thing the public is wasn't aware of you it. You said something about oversight. After this project all said and done, they apply for something that's called a certificate of compliance. And we, the commission goes out and inspects all of the tenants of this construction project. And if they haven't met all the requirements and the tenants of this, uh, the order of conditions, they don't get this certificate of compliance. So that's oversight after the project is done. But they cannot sell what they did. Well. <laughs> so there's a lot of pressure on, on the developer to get a certificate of compliance because all of the lawyers for to have a clean title needs to have not only an order of conditions but to, to be finalized because if you're if you're going to buy and not the apartments but the but the townhouses if you're going to buy a townhouse they're they're going to wonder why you don't have a certificate of compliance so they'd have to get into escrowing some money or something like that whatever their plans are i don't know but that's what's happened in the past so so how uh, would that work if the building the townhouses is selling them and then the rest is being finished? So it seems this is kind of well, you have so to give one certificate. So the conservation wants the retaining wall up first. As soon as that retaining wall is up, we understand where, you know, no one should be back in this other area. So get that retaining wall built and then everything else is going to be, you know, new, new construction and pavement buildings and things like that um, so the retaining wall the foundations 
um, at that point. So maybe you guys know, the retaining wall, is that going to be part of the as -built plans for the building inspector once the foundation goes in, or is that not going to be part of that initial build out? Uh, so before construction can start on a building, you know, there'll be a, a certified foundation plan on the building, but not necessarily the retaining The retaining walls might not be in. So the check and balance to the to the proper location for the foundations, which is the problem that you're talking about, where where was this thing and why was it not in the right spot, was that the building department asks for a as-built plan prior to allowing them to start building up. So foundations go in first, they verify that's exactly where he said it was going to be on the plan. That's all done by engineers and control constructions and things like that. So um, I guess fortunately this other problem happened and there will be a lot of eyes on this. And, uh, you know. Let me tell you, I, I was I, joking I, when I said I, take I, them from the interior. They're not going to do that. We can we can just write in our order of conditions that we're not going to allow sunlight on Walker's Brook, and it has to be taken care of. And they're going to have two choices to consider if they don't like what. We you have know. it. Yeah. We have it designed. Yeah. Hard. So I don't. Yeah, I don't. So, so <laughs> You cannot see much in any fortress. It's not designed until we get what they want us to do. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's going to come to bed. Yeah. How much we'll put in that is the thing, how much we have to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so you mentioned Jing, but there are lots of people who feel that way. We really, we would like to see some green space, because there's a lot of us who they don't need to see the problem, but it's not green space. So we're sworn in by the state of Massachusetts as conservation commissioners to look where no one else looks, which is away from the building and towards the wetland. I would expect everyone here to concentrate in those areas and not give up anything that they think is needed to protect the, the eight interests of the act. And I understand what you're saying, but the two things are not related in my mind. So that's not a conversation for this commission to away from one spot and give to another if we're talking about taking away something that would be habitat or water quality or you know breeding anything like that it, it, it can't happen so and I didn't know that there was that would what I would what just came up but I don't know how much that's going to be all right um. We continuing this? I think we've I think we've gotten to all the matters. I think they've all been addressed. So are we prepared to close and Oh, so if you're asking me, let's yeah. find out if, uh, if, if uh, you know, some member has to make a motion if they feel. I would only recommend that you close only and then uh, the commission can discuss what they might want to see as conditions or whatnot and the order of conditions. And what you're doing is you're stopping all public comments. And so, so if you have enough information at this point, then you would entertain a mission, a motion to close. I make a motion to close NOI 270-0711, uh, 2325 Lakeview Avenue, East Street, Map 17 and 18, Lot 131, 274, 275, 276, and 12, Federa Eaton Lakeview Development, LLC. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Two seconds. Okay. All right. So now are you asking us what we want to see as additional special conditions in the order? Yeah, if you have a list, if you can rattle some stuff off, uh, uh, if you want to say, I mean, I'd, I would like to discuss that, this one area and how we would, it looks like it's going to be the worst area, the one I have up on the screen right now, and what language would be to, you know, I don't want to just say, oh, yeah, we need 12 more trees out there to replace the, the you know, the 12 that are gone. I just want to have some language to say that we're going to look at it, I'm going to come up with something, something that works. Yep. And Maybe we should put some language in that sounds like a performance standard. Okay. 
we say any gap over a certain number of feet to look at replacing some kind of vegetation in that gap to provide um, and then put in the purpose for the right. for the purpose of shading the brook right. the brook right. to maintain pre-development shading do you, would you have any ideas on I mean, can you visualize what we're looking at, and yeah, then so how would you plant that? The idea of the, of the space, like a well, canopy, probably more than. <coughs> when you say performance standard, what are you going to compare it to? You can't. The a mature tree. Change. So Something how are you going to? Tree. I'd so say what, twenty to twenty-five feet would be good. So he knows the uh, a good distance, you know, to because when we're, when we're planting like say street trees and things, right? I mean, say twenty to twenty-five feet. When the canopies come together, they usually create shade. Sure, well, it's a, it, so too many trees too tight, they just choke each other. Yeah, right. but also we don't, right. we're not, so we're not just, we don't want to just plant trees to, you know, for their sake. So we're going to say if there's an opening of 20 feet, that yeah. we plant one shade tree sure. within that 20 foot opening. Does that sound reasonable? As long as it's, uh, it, it, we're, we're, our mission is to uh, try to match the existing condition. As best as, as best we can, not not to create, you know, new, right. new shade. Yeah. We're not trying to change change what's uh, what's like there you now. Limit, limit not to exceed the term. Really, there's not, there, there are not a lot of trees that you can look at. How about, how about limit to stay within 25 feet first of the wetland? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, it just takes me a second to find. I, I did count like 26 trees, and there's only like 11 now, so that's but it, that's it what's kind of where those trees are, right? They could be overlapping where there's already started shading. shading. Yeah, that's that good. were removed from the parking lot portion of the project, or outside the retaining wall. I'm I'm talking outside about the outside wall. of the retaining wall between the retaining wall. But they haven't taken anything down by the retaining wall. Have there are some things that are coming out in the on vicinity like, yeah. of the retaining wall. And because it was bare-ish, that's where I was. With, and right? the fact is, if we take those trees out, it will be really just wide open. What, what, what sheet is it? Yeah. So the grain plan, uh, which is uh, can we just a sheet you can number five of seventeen. Yeah. Oh, that it's like we can spend the rest of the night. Going is that it? Yeah. 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 Do you know what I okay. mean? Yeah. So here, I'd rather all count. these trees that you see that are X's here, yeah. right? This row, it's almost like a row. That's about 40 feet from the flags yeah. along, yeah. along the canal. Yeah. That distance, if you will, between the the, the mean the annual water. high water, which is like the back yeah. first observable breaking slope, yeah. and these trees, that gap right there, you can see they all, they're almost on a line. If you look at the total. They are it's the almost like right on top of the existing berm. I mean, I would, I would, there would you, I you know, Chris, on top of your head, what the average diameter of one of those trees would be? They weren't big. So they're all labeled on the, uh, conditions plan. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, the point is, if it's 40 feet away, I can't imagine there can't be a tree extending that far into any weapon. Okay. So that, that row, let me start from left to right. Eight inch deciduous, eight inch deciduous, eight inch deciduous, eight, ten, six, ten, eight, eight, six, eight, three, eight, 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 ten. Those are all ones that are along the top of the berm. Those diameters? Yeah, so those are those are not large, they got like large trees. Ten foot, twelve foot canopies. The, yeah. the, the other thing with these trees is one other thing that you have to understand is we're not talking about, you know, a verdant natural forest here. We're talking about trees that are, most of them are like weed trees. Right. Not, you know, they're right. bent and broken well, and... But look, so I walk past there like yeah. a lot. What's that? I said I walk past this side a lot. Yeah. And um, a lot of they're, they're pretty straight trees. In, in a lot of areas. I mean, maybe over by where the good townhouses are. But, yeah. I, I, you know, I, and I, th I do think they're all volunteer and no, right. one, no one planted right. them and, and all that. But I think there's going to be a certain number that's needed, uh, either that or shrubs or something that's mm -hmm. grow up a bit, you know, more than, more than four or five feet. So, 
it's hard to determine. We have we have 20 feet. Every 20 feet, you know, we'll look at what needs to be planted there. We have the performance standard, uh, any gap of 20 feet, plant a shade tree or shrub. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what's there now? Are we saying that it does or doesn't provide shade to that brook? Um, I think all those trees must provide some shade towards if they're, if they're the sun's ten, coming this way. The walls. They're 10 feet high. Right. The new ones? Yeah, those, Are you talking the, the new the ones? The diameter of breast height on the new ones, yeah. all the existing ones yeah. that are being taken? Yeah. So those ones all along the top of the berm are between 6 and 10 inches in diameter at breast height. You said that equates to 10 to 12 feet high? No, no the spread. No. The, the, oh, the, the spread. spread. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. So that's, that doesn't, yeah. doesn't They're provide like 35, the, yeah. 40 so feet high. For the so no. this is the southern border of the property, correct? Uh, that's right. This line. Yeah. This line right here. So the sun is always going to be below that casting. Yeah. So any shade or any variable shade from those trees would fall on the brook at all, if any. Even even at high noon on June 21st, it's still not straight up. Because we we went back there and we kind of him and I kind of before the snow hit, we kind of eyed out what we thought would actually happen to it. And we didn't see much impact. We kind of mapped it out for us. Yeah. If they were on the other side of the brook, it'd be a different story. Yeah. Yeah, because the shade from those trees would be falling on the parking lot, not on the brook. I think the reality is, if you were to go out there, that um, the Gabion wall uh, that holds up Jordan's and the Jordan's building probably provides more shade over the brook than, than any of our trees do. Jeez. Mm. That's That's true. True. That's true. Especially this time of year. <laughs> yeah. However, I mean, you know, so that, that, that gaping wall is probably 40 or 50 feet it's, high. Yeah. But, but, I mean, there's more than one wall back there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but between the wall and the wetlands, I think some amount of vegetation, um, I mean, that's, that's a, a really great barrier to set up um, a vegetated natural area. So, so yeah, so, and so to, to kind of like redirect for a second. Go ahead. We're not having a meeting anymore. It was only at our pleasure that the applicant was talking to us. So right. we can actually talk again and not involve them in the conversation unless they ask or you need some question and they don't even have to answer. So, so I, I was just wondering, yeah, order. let's just get our list. Get and, back to the order. You guys will get to review a uh, draft of the order of conditions and you can uh, you know, um, highlight what you don't do and don't like. So yeah. Back yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to like get out of here for like a while. <laughs> so, I, I can't think of much else besides what was on the plan and presented tonight. You on the clock? I can't think of much. Oh, did you really? Do you want to save the clock for that tree? Or it sounds like it's a deal. Anything else? Um, can I just get a, um, I don't know if we can do this, I guess we can. Um, so if it, if it comes just, just to say, uh, can we decide right now if they approach the, the neighbor and the neighbor said, yeah, cut the catalpa tree down, can we tell them, yes, they can? We no, decide that, that here. Let's have them. They can. They can bring that back to us. So that can be something that we address in the field. So okay. inside the hundred foot. I mean, I would like to know if we agree to it now. Then we would never know. <laughs> then we would never Chris know. Says it's not. It's inside. Well, it might be. I think it's just just outside. It might be close to it's it. Yeah. yeah. It's outside the hundred. Oh, so there's not so a yeah. lot so of your answer. to us anyway. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, she brought that up weeks ago. <laughs> 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 We're going I can't imagine why you would want to bring that up. That's what happens when you stay here too late. Um, uh, I have uh, I have the shading on that side. That's the southwest side, I guess. Yep. And the environmental monitor. Yep. Not lawn, you know. Um, yeah, but that's only for part of it. Right. Yeah. 
what, what do we have to do? No, I think just it's just read. I mean, just think of um, the 364, oh, you, anything on 364 uh, Lowell Street that comes to mind that we need that kind of like. I'll have you get some. I mean, that would be a good one to look at. You want to be there on certain certain yeah, parts. Child Street. Um, you know, let us. You know, we're just oh, and they're taking the burn down. Yeah. Taking I, th I think just a standard yeah. order of conditions will do a good review of it. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of information already presented, so yeah. I think. I think, okay. I think we're good. All right. All righty. I don't. I think the one thing that I'm still unsure about is this this, this area here with the trees, and, yeah. and we're going to have to work on it. And I heard that that has a lot to do with um, the park, which we don't know about. But uh, I mean, it's, we're it's not. Fair, it's fair to say it's a monetary expense, right? So yeah. we, we, there's only a finite amount of money if we've got to spend. It seems like we wouldn't know the answer to how many trees until further along in the project, like Which way further. That's the second phase of the project. Okay. So we can talk about this later. That's okay. Yeah. But that's <laughs> your. I mean, that's that's something between you and, and the neighborhood or whoever. But I mean, we're not. I mean, I don't want you to say, "Well, there goes the park" or something like that. That has nothing to do with us. Yeah. The landscaping plan does propose some plantings in that in that area. Uh, we were trying to keep trees you know, large trees out of it, you know, because that may turn into parking someday. Okay. So that's why we, right. we kept mm. mainly grass. Let's right. move on. Okay. We're going to move on. Okay. Yeah. Can we okay. To the we have... Okay, right. so we're all set. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for coming out, everyone. <coughs> yeah. You're welcome to stay. We've got some old new business to discuss. Chuck, minor project no. permit. Um, I don't even know if the gentleman's still here. Yeah, he's still there. 366 across. <laughs> if this takes 30 seconds, we really owe this guy an apology. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Uh, we have a new we have a, a new chair tonight. Not, Who has handed his, quite a schedule? Yeah. Yeah. Did a fine job, young lady. Yeah, thank you, sir. Oh, says the guy that wasn't here for it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. If I wasn't coerced. Moving it's actually on. pretty impressive to come in that way. So, Chuck, what are we discussing next? So, apparently, um, we approved this project just as you see it uh, highlighted on the screen right here. Yeah. And this okay. is 366 yep. Charles Street. Yep. And when they started their review for uh, the building de with the building department, I think some some uh, uh, issues came up and that led into more work that caused the applicant to come back to the commission okay. and ask for a minor plan change and we need to decide if what we're talking about is a minor plan change or maybe this is so big or changes the project so dramatically that the abutters would need to be notified again and we would need to do an amended order of conditions. But um, okay, the so applicant is the here and he's going to explain uh, a little more than I did about what's, I, I what's going on. I think he said all of that just to make sure that it didn't last just 45 seconds. Take your hand. Um, <laughs> Brian Warren from CJM Builders. Uh, so we recently submitted a plan change uh, showing the removal of the existing foundation and installing a new foundation. It's a long story behind it, but ultimately, uh, after giving the building department everything they asked for, structural wise, engineer drawings, everything they wanted um, to say the foundation was good to build on. They ultimately, after we spent thousands of dollars, said, no, we want the foundation up. Oh. The entire foundation? Yeah. We have engineer drawings stamped structurally saying that it's good, and ultimately, he said, no, I think a house like that should have a so, so is the put footprint for the new post house, is it the same? It's the same. Um, the garage, I think, is 10 inches um, wide up, left to right. Yeah. But uh, it's going to go in the same place. Probably 
people on the ground, um, you know, a foot and a half deeper than what's there now. Erosion control is going to stay the same? Yeah, everything is already in place, fences in place, yeah. nothing has changed, the only thing we've done so far in the project was remove the trees. Okay. It was you know, okay originally. Um, we have a demo permit, but we just haven't done it because I want to make sure that we're not taking this thing down until everybody's on the same page. Are you, are you expecting to excavate a lot more soil? No. No? Okay. We're going to go down a little bit, but the grading is all going to be ultimately the same, you know, the same finish. Just where you got the footing. And you're gonna no whatever you take out is gonna go right into a truck, or you're gonna have to store it somewhere on the site. So, uh, as we rip the foundation off, we'll do a dump uh, truck. So no, there shouldn't be any, especially this time of the year. If, if we get it in, it'll be right away. How, how much area beyond the foundation do you have to excavate? It, where it's pretty much in the same footprint. I mean, you're talking three feet. Just enough room for the body to walk by a stand form. And where does that soil from that extra three feet go? Um, it all depends on how you're going to backfill. So looking at this plane, you're going to have a little fill on the left end, a little fill on the right. So when you dig it out, you kind of use that material and kind of So you're going to just keep it where you need it? Yeah, you leave a little bit next to you, obviously, to, you know, backfill the foundation that's there. but. If there's, there's not going to be a vast amount of uh, material because the hole's already there. So once you move the foundation, once you take the old floor on the old foundation, it's going to go down another foot or two. So there really isn't going to be a left field that we're going to generate. Do you anticipate having to access the back side of the building, or is everything going to be from the front reaching in and from the sides? Yeah, from the front, and then come on the side and dig out. Yeah. I don't anticipate really much around the back um, okay yeah because that would be you know kind of a caution zone I don't even think you have enough room where the erosion control is allows you to kind of like go around those two do things I, do I remember correctly we just lot have like four or five acres only yeah. behind it that's all wet yeah it'll be here it's also got yeah. that big slab <laughs> so it's, it's actually under agreement <coughs> someone wants to buy it that parcel is supposedly under agreement so they must be coming up with a plan to come in from the other side not for me but from small <coughs> so, so um, Oh, we want to vote on whether this is my play. Well, I don't know. Is there any more questions? I don't have any other questions. I don't have any I think more. This, this is a, to me, this is a minor, yeah, minor yeah. change. Minor change to me. Yeah. I agree. Is there a change? Motion, so no motion, no vote. No. Uh, Let's do it anyway. No, no, I, you know, you would need to uh, make a motion. Someone needs to make a motion I'm to accept. A, I make a motion to accept the changes indicated as a minor play change. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Was it the I guy that bought it? Class I this is not, I was not trying to serve a here. I'm just curious. How old was the house there? You know? 52. 52 years. Was there something wrong with the foundation or just, you know? I mean, is it, it Width wise, there was, yeah, there was um, frost walls, eight inches thick. Um, so we had it structurally drilled down with dowels. And that was going to be a mean wall, so there was going to be no bearing. And on the garage, he had, because uh, it was a little taller of a wall, dowels again, but then dowel back in, so we pulled a slab. I mean, like I said, we put all the drawings, and I was horrified when I went in there, and he said, yeah, no, no. But, so oh, what, oh what's, a, what's a... You should have told me before. You should have said, no, don't get anything. I'm not going to let you do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not before I came here, but when I went to get the building permit, that's when you should have said, no, we're not going to allow that. Not, hey, why don't you go do this, get all this information, bring it back to me. And then come to find out at the end, you say, no, still. That's so did the, the person that bought the house to the left of this yep. project here, and they got no. the option on the lane in the back? No. No. That's just a couple of yeah, that was Is there actually access to the property behind you? Behind me? Is you, well, this job part? Oh, yeah. Your, oh, your yeah, but I don't know, you know that line. Technically, the only way to get into there would be, and I stopped that. Is that your property? In the back? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I thought that, I thought it was under it was under agreement, but yeah. you buy it. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Buy. I was buying the whole thing. We're going to put four houses all in it. All right. I see. Okay. But after we have the sides, we have the area like this, and then it's like this. Right. So I have a plan. You can put a couple houses. The time's still about ten. Right. So it's worth spending that more money 
it wasn't for me, it's worth it. 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 He's got issues coming to me from that side. I have that. I know how I am. I don't even know if it's too small in the store. Is there a right away off a small lane to get to that property? It's like, it might not be shown as a white lane. It's definitely a white lane. Something goes through there. Access piece. But I think of these. Because I was wondering when I went down the end of small lane, it's just that those water tanks there, it's part of the water department. How are they getting around that? It's under the green. I don't know who or what. I don't know much about it. Just got such a nice. It's coming. Well, I, don't know, I, don't know. Hmm. I think I'll move. <laughs> be the first to see. Just, we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> when they when they put the plan in front, it's fun. tight. It's, we have all the flies. We have it's really tight. Now. I don't know if it's just grew over time, but the maps of the town show this much land. And now it's like. Hmm. Interesting. Right, sorry, thanks. sorry thanks. to keep you as long. That was good. Al. <laughs> good uh, class. Everybody will find a way. <laughs> it's just money. Have a good night. Is that what Al's saying is? Okay. 35 Arcadia. 35 Arcadia. That we went to 35 Arcadia and we talked to a gentleman. Do you remember yeah. his name? Steen Bruggen. Jim. Bruggen Jim? Jim Steenberg. Yeah, Steenberg yep. and Jim. You know him. And we uh, let him know that the it's trees that were taken down years. were, you know, within the conservation's jurisdiction. We told him to look at our tree policy, and um, he said that the original owner uh, had taken the trees down, you know, days before he took over the house. So um, we explained that, you know, that's perfectly fine. That works for us because um, the violations transfer with ownership. And <laughs> <You're winning. laughs> yeah, it actually does. <laughs> and it's attached to the Yeah, it, it's that's attached amazing. to the property, not the owner. Yeah. And um, so but he was really good about it. And so he see. intends to, there's a couple oh, yeah, other trees out sure. there that he wants to take down. And he'll, he's, he's gonna, gonna not, not do any more work of taking down trees. And he's going to come to the commission under an RDA and present the whole project to us, and we'll be able to the talk about it. I love when those previous right. owners cut, cut down trees wow. on, on the way out. That <laughs> yeah. is wild. Yeah. He was, wow. I got to tell you, he was a nice guy. It's wild. Really yeah. nice. No, she got jammed at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. yeah what is the point of doing yeah, he's a nice guy. That is interesting. Wow. Okay, anything else, Chuck? Minutes, maybe? Yeah, I'd like to, so there's, we have a whole list of minutes. It would be great if we accepted all the minutes. I, Anika, did you review all four or five? Yep. And I think Anika said that they were just the best minutes she had ever seen. Yeah, I just have one comment on the ones from the 19th. December 19th, mm -hmm. but I emailed you those comments. You did. So, do you have those? So, uh, do we have motion to approve the minutes for December 12, 2018? I, I so make a motion to approve all of the minutes <laughs> indicated on the list. You gotta do one at a time. Uh, Just do them quickly. What do you have to want? 12, 12. Uh, except, uh, second. All those in favor? 12, 19, approve. Accept. Second. 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 Okay. All those in favor? Make okay. a motion to accept 1024. Second. All those in favor? Second. Make a motion to accept September 12th. Second. All, all those in favor? And then make a motion to accept January 9th. Second. All As those amended. in favor? As amended. Yeah. Nice. Nice catch. Okay. Dave's abstaining. All you right. Trying to wrap this up before I didn't read them. <laughs> you were here. You didn't have to read them. I know, but I didn't, I didn't read them. So. Anything else? Uh, no. When do you need? Lost. When do you need the? Yeah. So. The we have the conference coming up. I suggest everyone go. And um, it's, it's, always it's, a, it's always nice to go. It's yes. a little far. I feel like it's always a bad I, I, did see the the I saw the five to go to the MACC conference because it talks about. I mean, there's classes that you can take uh, you, you to kind of talk about the things that you, you feel like you, do. you know. You're always you wondering you why go. we ask for habitat replacement. And there might be a class on that. So I sent you out the list of all the classes, oh, okay. and it's paid for by our fees. 
and um, yeah, and uh, it's, it's a good, it's a good, uh, you know, it's a good way to kind of keep connected with your colleagues and to kind of gear up on you know what the next year is going to look like. And they offer a free lunch. Yeah, you get some freebies from Actually, the other than the fact that who does it have me? They used to have the the Ticket Association of Massachusetts conference yes. at Holy Cross the week before that, that like last week in February. Yeah. But like twenty six years straight, I think twenty five straight years, it was either a snowstorm, an ice storm or whatever, getting there. And it was hot. it was held in the same Hogan Center. It was horrible. It's terrible. There. Yes, it's terrible New, New England it's grows, Holy Cross. Yeah, the same thing. I mean and it's like at the to top 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 of the yeah, hill right. at Holy Cross. Mm -hmm. As high as you yeah. can get in. Yep. Oh, it's a it's a pain getting there. I've been there so many many times. Yeah. yeah. Did you? So, oh, okay, good. Oh, I was gonna say, is anybody taking uh, the fundamentals? Some of the. Yep. Bob, are you going? I don't know. I looked the list. Yeah. Um. Chuck, are you going? Uh, I'm I'm gonna go depending on what's here and who's going and who's driving yeah. and who's gonna buy me coffee on the way down. If, uh, if I, I don't have anything going, I'm, I'm gonna go this. this time. I can't Everything depends upon how you can defray any cost. Two other things. I can I can afford to buy uh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chuck. When do you? So it's, do you? You know, when I was younger, this 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 weekend was always on some weekend we decided to go away, and I this is just like I would have to. They would go away, and I would have to meet them. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you the uh, climate resilience and MVP planning, funding, and implementation. Yeah. I believe that's the one that my commission mm -hmm. is uh, presenting. So um, by your commission, which number you? is that? It's eight. Oh. So uh, we have two people. I think that's the one. There, we have this. Um, Sustainability, uh, climate <laughs> sustainability <laughs> bylaw in our bylaw. Try to get you guys would just blow a gasket over that because it's how. What have you done in your project to to keep um, adaptation to, to promote sustainability within the town of Arlington? Do, do we it, want to close part it? of their oh. part of their application they have to come up with something sheesh can i make a motion to adjourn okay is there a second second what's the favor are you sticking around are you going to go for the basketball game I do. Oh.